Did right, I'm referencing both your shape and your colour. Okay. That would be racist, right? That, see, this is the thing I Would that be racist? Of, yeah, if I said Ethiopians are raisin heads, that would be racist. That's not what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. When ISIS kidnapped Christians and had them as slaves, is it wrong or right? It was wrong. When the Ottoman Empire kidnapped Christians and made them slaves, is it wrong or right? There's probably some cases where it was wrong, yes. Probably, so there are some cases where it was right. This brother's position is that you're in war you can take Muslims and Christians and anyone else as slaves. Does anyone see the problem that none of them have a problem with slavery? If you know the transatlantic slave trade, you know that the Portuguese were the first Europeans to, to come to Africa and to torment and to destroy the lives of millions of people. Millions of people. So tell me, tell me you're proud. Tell me you're proud of the right to own people as property. But why? Can, can you please, uh, this is uh, about slavery. Can you uh, pl please uh, read about it? Yeah, next week you can talk to him. <laughs> the Islamic slave trade has lasted for 1400 years and it is still going on today in Sudan in Mauritania, in Saudi Arabia, and without any prompting from me, Kuwait. Are you proud of Mohammed's example? And therefore, are you proud that you have the right to own a slave? Are we, are we good to go roll? Good to roll? Yeah. So I, I want to I want to talk about I want to talk about nine reasons why I am not a Muslim. Nine reasons why I reject Islam. The the first of those reasons is the claim that Islam provides a perfect law. Muslims claim that Sharia law is a divine law, that it is that it is given by God in its fullness and in its completeness and that that law is perfect however this actually is not true what really happens is that Muslim scholars will take some reference or some vague principle in the Quran and then construct how you apply that law to the world uh, an example of this would be the fact that um, in the Quran it talks about fasting it says that you know the times of fasting by when you can tell the difference between black cotton and white cotton at the rising and the setting of the sun. However, what do you do about places like Greenland where there is no rising and setting of the sun? The way that, that Muslims have adapted their law is to speculate and to make up a principle that you either do it off the nearest country where there's a rising and the setting of the sun or you can do it off Saudi Arabia or that you, you, you do it off some other timing but it's not clear from the text of the Quran or from the text of the Hadith that this is what you do so what they are doing is they are inventing their law their scholars are inventing their law and that's one example on something as fundamental as fasting it is just the same as a Christian politician taking a Christian principle and applying it to a secular state and, and saying that because of this Christian principle we are going to apply Christian laws. So this is the first reason why I'm not a Muslim. The claim that Sharia law is a divine law is a lie. It is a falsehood. Sharia law is created by Muslim scholars based upon hadiths that were written later and the Muslims themselves don't agree. Another reason why I am not uh, a Muslim is because Sharia law does not provide a better society than secular law. Secular law in the West has provided a better economic justice, more social freedom, more social equality than Sharia law. And to prove my point, I say, look at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is an area of the world where Islam has dominated unchallenged for 1400 years. And people are not exactly flooding to Saudi Arabia to live. 
In fact, actually, many Saudi citizens are actually fleeing Saudi Arabia to live outside of an Islamic society because the freedoms and the equalities of a liberal secular society are more preferable to the restrictions of Sharia law. Sharia law doesn't solve the problems it claims to solve. So we're no better for it or without it. And I'm not saying that liberal secular law is perfect. And I'm not saying that liberal secular law is brilliant because it most certainly isn't. But what I am saying is that this promise of utopia that is given by Sharia law is a lie. It is false. The third reason why I'm not a Muslim is because of textual variants in the Quran. Muslims make the claim that their Quran is unchanged, unedited, and has remained the same for 1400 years, dot for dot, word for word, letter for letter. That is the claim of people like Ahmadidat. That is the claim of people like Zakia Naik. But the reality is, when you look at different texts of the Quran, you compare the most modern Quran to the oldest Quran, there are textual variants within them. And Muslims have made an argument that textual variants within biblical manuscripts is sufficient reason to doubt the reliability of those biblical manuscripts. Therefore, by using their logic, we can conclude that if there are textual variants in the Quran, that the Quran also cannot be trusted. Furthermore, the criticism about textual variants within the Bible, making the Bible invalid, is not a valid argument, because any genuine understanding of the Christian faith understands that the Christian faith came before the text. The text emerged out of the Christian community. It was written by Christians, it was written for Christians, and Christians are the ones to handle and interpret it. Whereas, by contrast, Islam is a religion based on the book of the Quran. That is what Muhammad started and the community formed around the book. So therefore, when there are changes to the book, that is a problem. My fourth reason for continuing to be a Christian rather than embracing Islam is the false argument made by Muslims that because our understanding of our faith has evolved in terms of the way that we describe central doctrines like the Trinity, which the language of which was canonized at the Council of Nicaea, because of this development that therefore our faith was invented. The fact that they, you can evidence that Christians were worshipping Father, Son and Holy Spirit from the earliest times is totally ignored by Muslim polemicists. And it also ignores the fact that Islam underwent historical change. The Hadiths are new, they weren't there at the time of Muhammad. The Islamic schools of law were new, they weren't there at the time of Muhammad. The fact is that Islam has developed. The theology of the Quran being an eternal book was something disputed by early Muslims known as the Mutasilites. And it wasn't until that disputation that Muslims came to the conclusion and canonized that conclusion that the Quran was eternal. So in Islam there is historical development and yet Muslims say that any historical development is evidence that that religion can't be trusted. Furthermore, there is an inherent contradiction within Islam where the Quran says that on this day I have perfected your religion. Which means that in the time of Muhammad, the religion of Islam was said to be perfect. If something is perfect, why do you need to add anything to it? And yet we see in historical development, things were added to Islam. Hadiths were added to Islam. Understandings of doctrines developed. These were not normative at the time of Muhammad, they came later. 
my third re my fifth reason for not being a Muslim and for rejecting Islam is the irreliability of the hadiths. The reality is that despite all their rhetoric, despite all their claims about how Isnad and Hadith science and Matin and the science of Hadith guarantees that the Hadiths are a reliable corpus of text, the reality is that Muslims themselves have no certainty. Muslims themselves are in disagreement about which Hadiths can be trusted and which hadiths cannot be trusted. Shia and Sunni Muslims, whilst both making the same claims about the reliability of hadiths, do not agree about which hadiths can be trusted. They disagree, demonstrating the fact that they have no certainty. We see in the park on a regular basis, Muslims chucking their hadiths under the bus. Even when you quote a Sahih Bukhari hadith to a Salafi Muslim, they will still chuck that hadith under the bus if they find that hadith too embarrassing, too controversial or too contradictory to something that they believe. And if Muslims themselves, sorry Yaya, sorry Yaya, I'm just doing a talk to the camera. I'm just going to have to talk over Yaya because I found myself a heckler. So the reality is that Muslims themselves have no agreement about which hadiths can be trusted and if they themselves cannot know what hadiths can be trusted, why should any of us trust the corpus of hadiths? Our scale is the Quran. My seventh reason, sorry, my sixth Quran, reason if any hadith for denying Quran, and rejecting, don't be rude, Yaya. I will be rude. There we go. You are the this is the kind of supremacist you are ideology. And I'm so, answering you. I'm, I'm not asking you. for an answer. No, I'm giving asking, my reasons your, your reason, as to why your, your reason, I reject Islam. Uh, you, my I sixth I, reason I, for rejecting Islam, Islam is the fact Islam. that Paul and his Christianity defeated all opposition. The reality is Paul, that the Quran makes Paul a does. promise to the followers of Jesus and that promise that the Quran makes the to the followers of Jesus, the fact is that grace. that promise that was made to the followers of Jesus is that they, the Muslims of the first century, would be made superior over the disbelievers in Jesus and the Islam of his day. The Islam, but, but the reality the is the reality and is and you don't, you don't that the apostolic church you. was the this movement is, this is that won out over all other opposition. As a cow, Paul last time and you run away Peter from and James and Thomas and the Thaddeus and all the apostles were victorious. And so the promise made by the Quran was proven false because the Quran made a promise that the Muslim followers of Jesus would be superior and they were not. They are not anywhere in history. No one even knows about them. No one talks about them. No one argues with them. No one disputes with them. There isn't a shred of evidence that they ever existed. And that is a historical fact. They did not exist. The Quran made a false promise and put it in the words of Allah and that false promise is not true. Let me give you the difference my and it's reason, your gospel. Because to see my eighth reason lies, is asked. because I didn't you invite Yahya to a no, debate. You're, you're he is just Islam. forcing his way into a conversation ah, okay. that I am having with the camera. No, no, have it with the camera, but don't My talk about eighth Islam. reason, my eighth reason for rejecting Islam is that supposedly a perfect man, a great prophet called Muhammad, established a perfect system called Sharia law. And in that Sharia law, there was a caliph, a system of law a political system, 
that was perfect, that was from God. And that prophet was succeeded by rightly guided caliphs in a perfect system. Thank you. And that perfect system died. Where is it? Where is the caliphate now? The caliphate is dead and buried. It was a socio-political economic experiment that failed in history. Would you allow me to answer? Why did it fail Would you after allow I finished? After I finished. You will never finish. After, after I finish, Mr. Yeah. Bean. Your patience, please. Is that, uh, the reason okay. why you know my name the caliphate yeah. failed is because it wasn't perfect and it wasn't perfect because it wasn't from God and it wasn't from God because Muhammad wasn't a perfect man and he didn't establish a perfect system. By contrast, we Christians believe that the Ecclesia, the Church, was founded by Jesus Christ on his apostles. And you can find the Church today in every country of the earth and you can find the church today even in Saudi Arabia where you can't even find the caliphate. So the very place where Muhammad established his so-called perfect system, his socio-economic political reality, and where Islam has remained unchallenged for 1400 years, you can't even find the failed Islamic caliphate but you can find secret Christian believers in Medina, Riyadh and Mecca. The underground church is alive in Saudi Arabia where the caliphate is dead. And so we don't need Islam. We don't need a caliphate. What we need is Christ's church. My final reason, and then Mr. Bean can respond. <laughs> My final reason for rejecting Islam is Muhammad himself. Now, many Muslims who can hear my voice believe that the last example of a genuine Islamic caliphate was the Ottoman Empire. So let me look at the Ottoman Empire and know them by their fruits. The Ottoman Empire invaded lands that were not their own. The Ottoman Empire persecuted Christians and Jews. The Ottoman Empire kidnapped and enslaved Christians by the millions. The Ottoman Empire indoctrinated children as child soldiers and sent them back to kill their own mothers and fathers and to rape their own sisters and cousins. The Ottoman Empire had a slave trade. The Ottoman Empire desecrated churches. The Ottoman Empire stole land and property and riches that were not their own. So the Ottomans don't represent Islam. Do the Ottomans represent Islam? Uh, to, an extent, yeah. to an extent, yes. But at the same way, the Byzantines also represent Christianity. And everything that you said about Islam, and everything you said about Jesus, I can find with the Prophet Muhammad, I can find in Islam also. So Okay, let's do a what, quick what test you, of that claim. Done, what you've done right now was very carefully, selectively looked at history, and you pointed out what you didn't like. But then at the same time, you know his, history is extremely complex, okay. and it's not one-dimensional. You, for example, you claimed, you did say that Christianity, uh, you said that the Christians uh, fought against, uh, against slavery for 2,000 years. Yep. You know what, I agree with you, to an extent. But then also, if you look in history, you'll find that the Slavic people in East Europe were enslaved by the Romans, who uh, freshly converted to, to Christianity. Yep. So you find this in history throughout. So now let me, let me return to yeah. that point, because you said I was very selective. So let's be very specific. Well. Did Muhammad own slaves? Yes, he did. Did Muhammad permit his followers to sell slaves? Yes. Did Jesus? No. So there's a difference. Okay, and why? So now, hold on one second. Okay. If I follow the example of Jesus, yeah. 
and you follow the example of Muhammad, yeah. which one of us can own another human being as a property? Well, I didn't want. I wouldn't want to. No, that, that wasn't my yeah. question. Yeah. I said according to our religion, yeah. which one of us can? I can. There you go. If the, That's the difference. On, hold on, hold on. Close to it, and the close is that if I live in a society where it's normative, you were speaking of something that was normative during the time of, the, uh, of Jesus being alive. Yes. And, and, and that slave owning was normative. The, the rule of the day. And he now, didn't. But now, did Muhammad? Now, now. But did Muhammad? I, I already ex I already explained to you that he did. Yes. Right? Thank you. But so let me let's let, let's drill down into this. Let's drill down into this because you've just said. Yeah that according to Islam, you can own another human being as a piece of property. That's what you said. Well, and it's on camera. Right, one second. No, hold on, Are you proud of that? No, I want to ask no, you. No, hold on. I, I, Are you tell, proud? Let me tell something. Are you proud of it? Something. Let me tell something. I live in a world, okay, as a Muslim, I live, I live in the West. I live in a place where owning a slave is illegal. Okay. Because of whose influence? Islam or Christianity? Well, it, it was not just Christianity. No, that's it not. Was, it's not just Christianity. It's, it was an Happening slave in the Muslim trade, world, from a historical point of view, first of all, to, to is it still happening in the Muslim I world? I will answer, but let's have a, cons uh, a discussion. Let's time it. Shall we do three minutes? Three minutes? You can if you want. Yeah, to. because but I would love to have a discussion I was supposed, I was versus to a debate because I think we, we, we would gain more benefit. Even yeah, from let's, your let's have, you can join. Answer, you can all join in. Even from your perspective, you will benefit a lot because so, let's time every, it. everything that you said. There's truth in it. Well, one second. We're going to do three minutes, three minutes. He's going to have three minutes. I'm going to have three minutes. Once the three minutes are in, you just shout time. You stop. So you have the first three minutes, yeah? Sure, that's fine. Right. Okay, go on. Okay. Go. All I'm, all I'm saying is this. Look, you said a lot of things. And when I said selective, it doesn't mean it's wrong. Okay? So being selective does not mean that you're telling lies. All I'm saying is that everything that you said about said could also be said about Islam, you know, you, you talked about patience, that Jesus had patience and forbearance. I could say the same thing about the Prophet Muhammad says when he went to Taif and was stoned by kids and children and, and chastised for 13 years in Mecca without retaliation, without plundering people, right? I could say the same thing. Now, you talked about slavery. Now, slavery is a thing that people like to throw the balls and, 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 and um, trying to um, score points, but you will find that various of societies have been engaged in slavery you said that uh that christianity somehow had an influence on it yes the quakers had influence on on, on endings on slavery but there was also economical uh, benefits in ending slavery we find this that uh, today you can go to a database and you'll find that the, the ancestor for david cameron yeah they got paid compensation because they freed slavery because of uh, the uh, industrial age that ca that came around the Victorian times, that slavery was not as profitable anymore, and that's why you have the south and east, uh, the south and north uh, divide in America, because there are still people who are holding to traditional values, Christian values also. To say now, am I going to say now that this is inherently a Christian problem? No, it's not, because I look through the lenses of geopolitics, I look at the lenses of sociology, and I look at the lens of its history, and you'll find that it's a human condition to oppress. You will find this amongst Muslims, you find this amongst Buddhists, yeah? Hindus had slaves, there's caste systems in Hinduism. These are whole human conditions, you know? And I am, I try to be honest, I, I look at things in, his, in, in history, Islamic history, and we will come to this because it's all about the Ottomans. There's deeply problematic issues amongst the Muslims in their history and things they've conducted and things they've done. I'm not gonna lie to you about this. But to somehow um, pin it back, to a religion, I could do the same thing with Christianity, and we 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 we're pretty much in the same boat here. Wait, so are, are, you, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. I'm so done. Well, no, let me reset. Oh, because I'm talking with him. If he'll be patient. No, I'm, thank you. Okay, so reset, and then I'll do three minutes when you're ready. Uh, let, let me. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 I'm talking with him. I'm talking with him. I'm talking with him. Free and slave. So, so hold on. Yeah, yeah. One second. Oh, I'll wait until. Uh, oh, one second. Are, are, are you ready? Yeah. So yeah. my point to you is this. Yeah. My point to you is this. I am. I am. I. I know that every group of people in every civilization, from a socio-economic and political viewpoint, yeah. have done all the same crimes. Yeah. We're all guilty of the same things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My point to you is that those things that we would recognise as wrong, yeah. 
Like the idea that my ancestors may have at some point owned your ancestors as slaves, we would both say is wrong, I assume. Yeah. But I can validate that through my example of Jesus. Yeah. You cannot validate that argument through your example yeah. of Muhammad. Because as you have already admitted, yeah. Muhammad did have slaves. Yeah. Muhammad did permit his followers to have slaves. Mm -hmm. and, we, and because you esteem... Yeah. One second, yeah. I did so, not interrupt. So, so but then you, what you are saying is, yeah. Muhammad is the best of examples. Which means that which Muhammad did yeah. is normative to you. And when we look at the Quran and the Hadiths, what we see in Sahih al-Bukhari is Muhammad sanctioning the use of slavery. Yeah. We see in the Quran the sanctioned use of slavery. Yeah. And because you believe that that is eternal for all times and all people and all places, yeah. you can't get away from that reality. Yeah. Brother, can you tell me when I've got one minute left, please? Now, my point to you is, yeah. if we are saying that in our conscience and in our intellect, yeah. We recognize that me owning you as a slave, yeah. or you owning me as a slave, is a moral evil. Mm -hmm. Then it follows, yeah. then it follows, that our preeminent example, our last yeah. example, should be the one that lays the groundwork for that to collapse. Mm -hmm. But what we see in Islam is quite the opposite. Christianity fought against slavery multiple times. We abolished slavery in England, the first time was in 1068 or 1069. That was, that was centuries before Islam ever abolished slavery. Mm -hmm. In the Islamic world, the slave trade happens today. Now let me ask you this question in closing, because I'm coming yeah. to the end of the minute. Please answer this in your sure. three minutes. Sure. Are you proud of Muhammad's example, and therefore, are you proud that you have the right to own a slave? That's the question I would like you to address. Yeah. Because as a Christian, using Christ as my example, I could never claim that. Yeah. So, over to you. Okay. okay, first of all, when we talk about slavery, we must, um, we must be very careful that uh, slavery does not manifest itself everywhere the same. Okay, Roman slavery and the, the rights of the slaves during the Roman times is going to be a totally different um, reality to the slavery during um, uh, the Egyptian time. Now, the slavery or the transatlantic slave trade um, it cannot be compared to the slave trade that took place uh, amongst the Ottomans and I'm not saying either of them are better or worse but I'm just saying the manifestation of it is, 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 is totally different. Now, when we say slavery, most people would think of Africans being taken, being kidnapped and taken to the new world, right? And then that's the backdrop that we have. And then we, and then we think of the Prophet Muhammad Sassam, and then we think that he did similar or that's the slavery that was the manifestation of his time. Now, I can give you hadiths right here on how badly people who weren't Arab or people who weren't associated to particular tribes were treated because they were slaves. Okay? The way I understand Islam, my, my personal way I understand Islam is that Islam comes to a society and tries to filter out the, the ills. And equally, if you say to me that a hadith with the Prophet Sassam, to your interpretation encourages having slaves, you also have to then say that are also hadiths where the Prophet Muhammad discourages slaves and uh, makes uh, manumission or the, the freemen of slaves a a, 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 a very core uh, a core activity for people. How does he do that? But telling people that if you free a slave, this is your reward. Thank you. Such and such. Freeing a slave is an equivalent like you you will you won't never be able to repay your you will never be able to repay your father unless you free a slave for example things like that there's many many things in the quran as well encouragement of freeing people from this bondage so islam comes into a time where as you said it's normative it, it tries to filter out all the the ills of it however you need to understand that 7th century Arabia is a, a place where tribes subjugate and wars and uh, fight and, and these things are just a reality 
that did not change during the lifetime of the Prophet, clearly. Thank you very much. Okay. I answer your question, by the way. You, you didn't. No, no, no. Yeah, no, bro, bro. No, because we're doing a time debate. So, let, let, when you're ready. So, the, the, the fact of the matter is, if Islam came to filter out the ill and to build up the good, it has failed. Because in 1400 years, yeah. Islam never stopped slavery yeah. until it was pressured to, the Islamic world was pressured to yeah. by the Western world. Perfect. It was the Western world that yeah. pushed the Islamic world into abolishing yeah. slavery. There was no internal movement yeah. within the Islamic world to abolish slavery. There never has been and there never will be. Because if you, if you say that you're going to abolish slavery, you're going to have to say that Muhammad did things that were wrong and therefore he isn't the best example. Let me just give you some examples of Muhammad. Yeah. Sahih al-Muslim, book what, 015, number 4122. Sorry, 4112. Imran B. Hussein reported that a person who had no other property emancipated six slaves of his at the time of his death. Allah's messenger, may peace be upon him, called for them and divided them into three sections, cast lots amongst them and set two free and kept four in slavery. Hold on, you no one second, don't interrupt, I did not interrupt you. you no, don't interrupt, don't, don't, don't interrupt. I don't understand Bro, don't interrupt, I did not interrupt you. Muhammad had people that were yeah. set free yeah. and he put them back into slavery. That's your example. This is what Muhammad did. Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 3, book 41, uh, hadith number 598, narrated by Jabir. A man manumitted, that means to release, yeah. manumitted a slave, and he had no other property than that. The, so the Prophet cancelled the manumission. He cancelled the release of the slave and had him brought back into slavery and sold the slave for him. Here's another example of Muhammad, narrated by Anas bin Malik in Sahih Bukhari, volume 8, book 80, number 753. The Prophet said, the freed slave belongs to the people who have freed him. So even when you're set free, you're still owned in the wider context by the slave owners. The reality is, the reality is, that Christians were fighting against slavery in the classical period. They would examples? sell, yeah, I'll give you some examples. Um, in my next three minutes, I'll give you examples. We abolished slavery in England in the 10th century. In the 10th century, that's when the Islamic slave trade was ramping up. You talked about Janissaries and the Ottoman Empire. Let me tell you what it looked like for my people, the Christian peoples of Eastern Europe. The Ottoman Turk, would ride in and demand our children. Can you imagine someone coming up to you and saying, give me your child as a payment for a tax? Because they couldn't pay the jizya tax, the Ottoman Turk, the Ottoman Muslim, came into Christian villages and took their children as payment. And who else did that? Muhammad did that, and I'll show you that as well. Now, let me ask you that. Do you agree with taking people and distributing them as the possessions amongst the believers? So you've got two questions, two questions. Are you proud of your right to own another human being as a piece of property? Are you proud of it? Two, do you agree with the idea of distributing people amongst the believers as possessions like your prophet did? How many, how long is that? Three and a half. Okay. Have I still got a bit of time? Okay, your turn. Okay. So he asked me if I am proud to own slaves, right? That's, that's what you said. You're proud of your right to own slaves. Right to own slaves, okay, good. Okay, and then you also said that um, the second question was, can you second question was, do you agree with the idea of yeah. taking human beings and distributing them amongst the believers yeah. as property like your prophet did? Okay, so my understanding of Islam and, and, it, and its law and the way it's understood is not static. So I'm not someone who believes that uh, 
because there was a time where people were doing that, that I have to necessarily do that and that's somehow my uh, attendance of me entering uh, paradise. That's not what Islam for me is. I look at Islam and I understand Islam in a context of the zeitgeist I'm living in. I live right now in the UK. I'm originally from Africa. I, I, I live, I li I, I live um, in the UK. And, uh, uh, let, let him talk bro, let him talk bro. Uh, and um, now, of course you're going to hear things like that uninformed ignorant statements like there's only one Islam but when you look at the, the, the classical scholars and, and, and contemporary scholars they come to different conclusions because there's additional information that changes in, in, in politics changes in, 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 in the way people perceive certain things and that's, that's, and, 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 and that's how I see that so your question is an you are now forcing me to go back to the seventh century and, and, and sort of apply that to my life when the context of the seventh century I don't live in. So that's, that's how I would answer that. Um, One minute. The other thing that you're saying as well is that um, your problem clearly is uh, that the Prophet Muhammad was owning slaves, right? Um, and again, I, I, I look at it. In, in terms of a, of a believer, first and foremost, but I also look at it as in terms of a historian. Uh, that was that was the, the that, that's what was happening at that time, right? He was saying about Islam failed because uh, it never abolished slavery. Now I've never claimed that Islam came to abolish slavery, but it came to regulate, possibly, and to um, get get rid of the ills uh, as much as possible as much as society allows it to to to, to, to happen and yeah and and, and yeah and, and kudos to the christians and the quakers who got rid of slavery but um okay time yeah. time right yeah so let us be clear yeah you're ducking and i don't blame you that's fine if you if you think that that's because because well, don't, i didn't interrupt you yeah. don't interrupt me yeah. you're ducking because you can't be, you can't just stand here and say you're proud of Muhammad. I can say that. Of no, well, I didn't interrupt you. Yeah. You had the opportunity to say that you're proud of your right to own slaves, and you didn't. Because Muhammad why gives. Why do I have to do that? Th why are you interrupting? Yeah, no. Why are you interrupting? Yeah. I didn't interrupt you. Can I start my three minutes again, please? Okay. So you had the opportunity to stand here and said, "I am right. I am proud of the rights that Muhammad gives to me." to own another human being as a piece of property. But you didn't. And the reason why you didn't, bro, is because your conscience is better than the conscience of your prophet. And I don't blame you. But that should be telling you something. If you can't look at Muhammad and say, the liberties that he has given me, I am proud of, and the restrictions that he has given me, I am proud of, then he's not worth following. I can stand here and say that I am proud of Jesus Christ and I am proud of the example that he gives me. Where he gives me liberty, I want to live in that liberty. Where he gives me restriction, I want to live in that restriction. And that is a better example to you, because I am yet to find a person that can find a problem with Jesus. But I find plenty of problems with Muhammad. That's actually the reason why I rejected Islam and became a Christian. I, I, the reason why I became a Christian is because a Muslim tried to convert me to Islam and when I compared Muhammad to Jesus, why you I ignore, just stop interrupting, why you the, the, pause uh, my time please. Matthew 15, 22, 28, where the Canadian woman was sorry, called, sorry. Called, referred to her as a We're dog. We're just going to have to wait until he's, he's As a dog. And this is, uh, he's talking about Jesus in another place. Uh, Jesus uh, talking to, to people, he loved only the Jew and he called non-Jew dogs and pigs. He ignores that and uh, he don't like to, to be interrupted, but he can interrupt and tell you to shut up. Please, carry on. Okay, so we'll start my time again. And please no, no, note no, it. No, 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 again. No, no, let no, him start again, let him. So, let, let him take consideration. No, not again, not again, we'll start. Uh, Have you paused Answer it? this, uh, Matthew 15, 22, 28, uh, exactly 26, where he said to the woman, it's not bread. Can you I stop am No, no, you okay, told me. So, uh, as I was saying, right, so as I was saying, I look at Jesus and where he gives me liberty, I want to follow in that liberty. Yeah. Where he gives me restraint, I want to follow in that restraint. And I can stand here and say I'm 100% behind that. Yeah. So I'll ask you again, are you proud of your right 
to own another human being as a piece of property. Yeah. Now furthermore, there are hadiths where Muhammad took people that were captured in war and distributed them amongst the believers. Are yeah. you aware of those hadiths? Yeah, I am. am I lying about that? I'm not. No, those are they real things. So Muhammad, uh, Muhammad did the that. They will do the do same you with believe? Women, do with you Muslim believe women. that you they, have the right? Have that win. Muslims have the right to take other human beings and distribute them as property the amongst the believers when if you are victorious in war? That's another question. Uh, now you'll have to give me a you. He wasn't interrupting you. He's just interrupting me. So my point, my point, my point is that I gave a nine thesis as to why I reject Islam. Yeah. The example of Muhammad is one of them. Yeah. The other example we've already alluded to, yeah. which is that Islam claims, Islam claims to solve society's problems, mm -hmm. but it couldn't even solve the problem of slavery, even years to do so and even when it controlled huge tracts of land without any real opposition you don't say the Islamic empires uh, him, stood for him. over a thousand years yeah. they were the dominant force and they couldn't stop slavery yeah. but at the same period the same period Christians were stopping slavery in their lands even before Islam in the Byzantine Empire, in the 5th century, slavery was being stopped. In England, in the 10th cent in the 11th century, slavery was being stopped. In Italy, in France, at the same time that the Islamic empires were ramping up their slave trade, the Christian kingdoms were abolishing slavery. And that is because Islam failed to deal with slavery, whereas Christianity did deal with slavery. Uh, now, okay, is, that is now five. Is it three minutes? So my my, my final point. Yeah. So my two questions again. Yeah. One: Are you proud yeah. of your right to own another human being as a piece of property? This brother says yes. And two: Are you do you agree with the right to take people you've captured in war? and distribute them as property to the yeah, believers. Yeah. Okay, now this man is asking me a question and he wants a particular answer. He wants me to say yes, I'm proud. Proud of what? Proud of owning slaves. Now, I've already explained to you, I've already, already explained to you, look, the way you understand Islam is not the way I understand, I understand Islam, okay? Uh, can you shut up and don't, don't interrupt me? Okay. Pause his time. Can you shut up? Yeah, yeah, shut up. When you're ready, just ask him to start. Now, do, I, I, will, I will shut my fucking mouth if you shut as well as me. You fucking idiot. Carry on. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's what you were talking just, just let, Just talk yeah. to them. Yeah. Okay, now, Bob, right? Yeah. 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 Look, Bob, I've already said to you, my answer is nuanced. I'm, I'm saying to you, yeah, that you are ans you asking me to answer a question that is extremely specific. You are talking about the Prophet Muhammad owning slaves, living in the 7th century, having uh, to fight uh, um, tribes, having to fight enemies, having to defend people, having to go to battle. I've never been in a battle. I've never been into a battle, right? I've never been amongst groups. Keep going. I've never been amongst groups who've done such things. Now, it's, I can't answer that. I can't say I'm proud of that because it's not, it does not apply to my life. Now, if we were in a time, okay, where there would be battles and wars and, and I happen to be a Muslim and, and, and the conditions are there for me to be there, I, I would probably answer in affirmative. I'd be like, look, this is the context that I live in. This is what happens in war. Yes, I am proud. Besides that, I, I am proud of the Prophet Muhammad SAW for who he is and for what he stands for. The second question, what was the second question? Sorry, what was the second question? The second question was... Do you believe that captured people in war can be distributed yeah. as property to the believers, okay, Muslim so, believers? Okay, you see, that's, that's a very nuanced question that you're asking me. Now, we live in a time today where there's international laws, where there's sovereign countries. When you say that, are you saying a sovereign country going to another sovereign country and doing that? Or are you saying that I'm part of a vigilante group like ISIS and then 
I insert myself in the Middle East when there's a vacuum because there's a civil war, I happen to be a part of that group, then I would say no. So you see the question that you're asking me are very nuanced. Because we live, again, because it's, it's, it's specific to the time that we live in. in. I live in a, in, in a place where there's nation states, the economical blocks like the EU and America and China, where there's international laws that rule now. Now, if you ask me now, I can't, unless I'm part of a vigilante group that I disagree with uh, from the get-go. So that's how I'm going to answer, and if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Can I reply? Are you, are you done? Yeah. Okay. Ready when you are? Apologies for interrupting. It's alright, don't worry about it. What's your name, bro? Dawood. Dawood, Dawood, as, as we can see, is weaving. And I don't blame him. I asked him a very simple question. Mohammed gives Dawood the right to own another human being as a piece of property and he doesn't want to say he is proud of the right that Muhammad gave to him. And the reason, but the brother behind him is proud. Either way, we have a problem. Why the way we have a problem? If you are stood here or can hear my voice, any human being who says that he is proud of the right to own another human being has a conscience that is deformed from the good. They have a conscience that is corrupted and evil. And if you agree with me, then you disagree with Muhammad because Muhammad gave you that right. Now you said that you can't ask me to be proud of something in the 21st century that was applicable in the 7th century. But the reality is, the whole point of Islam is that we go back to a 7th century Arab and say that he is the best example to follow and imitate him in what he does in his implementation of the Quran. So let's look at what the Quran says. Here's something that the Quran says. Quran 33, Ayah 50. O Prophet, indeed we have made lawful to you your wives to whom you have given their due compensation and, did everyone hear the and? And means in addition to, so more than your wives also permitted to you are those your right hands possess. That is a phrase that is talking about slaves. So permitted for the Muslims to have sex with are their wives and their slave women. The Quran is said by Muslims like Dawood to be an eternal book, a guidance to the whole of mankind, which means that this is something applicable to the 21st century. So I will ask you again, Dawood, yeah. according to the guidance of the Quran, not the example of a 7th century nomadic prophet, but the Quran's statement yeah. that you can own people with your right hand as a possession. Are you proud of what the Quran says that you can do? By contrast, Christianity does not sanction slavery and why is that? Oh, how many minutes have I got? I'm, have I done? I'll have to come back to it. Okay, look, um, and this is actually for the viewers, right? Because what has happened for a very long time is that we have loads of people who like to talk about things, right? And I think it reflects the politics in this country at, at this very time as well. That we have lay people and incredibly a huge, you know, knowledge or Islam, history, sociology, all these things been uh, democratic, democratically open so that everyone can talk about it and nuances uh, don't exist anymore and we live in a time of absolutes and that's probably why populism is doing, uh, is, is alive and well. Now, for the people actually and how Islam uh, is practiced and how scholars traditionally have applied laws okay the quran is a book that we believe is from god and it came down in its revelation and it, 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 it it's in response to or a reaction and react and it's sometimes proactive sometimes it's reactive now what i'm trying to say to him for like the last three minutes is that if you ask me today 
Slavery. Let's define what slavery is. Slavery is a system. Slavery is predicates a system. There has to be a system. Now you're asking, okay, a African man who is in the UK, whether he would be proud to own a slave. I'm telling you, I don't even have the environment. There's not even environment for me to have slaves. Okay, I'm an average guy. I'm not saying that slavery does not exist. It does exist in his life in the world. But I'm saying I am an average guy. I live in a system where there's no slavery. There's no need for slavery. There is a leeway for me as a Muslim to say, you know what? I don't need and I'm not in need of slavery, nor do I condone slavery. And it doesn't make me any less Muslim. The Islamic law, the Sharia that you were talking about early on, is an extremely flexible system that adapts to its environment and its context and its zeitgeist. And that's something that once we can understand that, then we aren't, I'm not like you want to pin me down to static understanding of, on how jurisprudence is understood. Jurisprudence, jurisprudence is, a, is a study, is, 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 a, is an area that is life or not static. <laughs> Sorry. It's important to see this. These are real people really going for this. Forget about the word ISIS. What no. I'm saying as a Sorry. of the Prophet. Okay. If, if Can I I'll hold that book for a moment? Can I hold that book? In my next three minutes, I'll hold that book. They took, took yeah. Muslim women as, uh, so, as, so my three as minutes now. Notice, notice that Dawood said how the scholars apply it traditionally. For 1400 years there has been an Islamic slave trade and it has never ended, ever, ever. Islam failed. If you say that slavery was wrong and Islam came to abolish that which was wrong, then Islam is a failure because Islam never abolished the slave trade. By contrast, and it didn't just fail in its failure to get rid of the slave trade, it failed in the caliphate. The caliphate doesn't even exist anymore. The reality is Dawood, when he suits him, is saying, I don't want to follow Muhammad's example. And when it doesn't suit him, when it does suit him, he says he wants to follow Muhammad's example. By contrast, Christians like Saint Ovidias, would sell, this is in the classical period, so this is in the Roman period, would sell themselves into slavery and then would use the money that they raised to free slaves. Christians like the Mennonite brothers during the European slavery went to the Caribbean to preach the gospel to slaves. They wanted to sell themselves into slavery so that they could share the suffering of the slaves. Now, regardless of these individual examples that we can point to, it boils down to the paradigm of Muhammad or Jesus. Jesus never had slaves and he is my example. The Old Testament talks about slavery, much like the Quran talks about slavery. But we Christians understand the Bible through a covenant paradigm, which means that the old covenant law doesn't carry into the new covenant law, except and as the new covenant law transforms and embraces it. And nowhere in the new covenant can slavery be justified. Perfect. However, however, Islam in the Quran, verse after verse, justifies slavery. Muhammad justifies slavery. That is the example that Dawood faces. And his conscience is telling him that it isn't Muhammad that is the best example, but that it is Jesus Christ. History tells us that the caliphate set up by Muhammad doesn't exist anymore, but the church founded by Jesus does. So that which was established by Jesus has stood the test of time and that which was established by Muhammad has not stood the test of time. Excellent. Are we done? Okay, so first of all, um, you said something at the beginning. You said that, um, so Islam came and it's had, it has basically failed to abolish 
slavery in 1400 years and it's still going on well if I was to use the same uh, example that you're using then Christianity has failed because we actually know today that global global slavery and human trafficking is big is as big as it's never been and there's various various societies were involved in it in North America alone which today prides itself to uh, be based upon Christian Judeo values has thousands and thousands of children being kidnapped into sex trafficking which is the form of slavery also so based upon that and you're and but but I'm not using it, I'm just using it to show you how he rationalizes I, I don't rationalize like that I'm not gonna say Christianity has failed because of that you keep going back to the Ottoman Empire the Ottoman Empire approximately existed for thousand years or 900 years don't quote me on that and it ceased to exist for like less than 200 years now that's your equivalent of uh, uh, um, what's it called a nation or an empire failing and again it shows me really that you're illiterate when it comes to history and your understanding of history that empires do exist they come back and they come and, and, and they exist in different forms now the other thing that you need to understand is this that's a hadith where the Prophet Muhammad actually prophesied it. He said there will come a time where you will have a king and then you will have a ruler and then you will have a, a politicians ruling. And I'm just paraphrasing this hadith. The hadith basically is commenting on what? It's commenting on different types of governance that the Muslims will live onto the day of judgment. So we knew, we were foretold that there will, um, that the, the, the caliphate, the way we um, so yeah, that's one thing. So to say that Islam has failed, first of all, I've never claimed ever before Islam came to abolish, the word abolishing. Abolishing means to, uh, cease to exist in the effort to uh, remove slavery. Why? Because with history, you will find, and, we, and it seems like we're going back in history again with the wave of uh, far-right pol um, politics that has taken hold of of, of, of countries in Europe, especially in this country. You will see that in history, it's not a linear understanding of history, rather it's sec secular. So things that might not apply today, where there is no wars and there's no civil wars and there's no slavery, could be looking di different in 50 years. And Islam, like I said to you, is this. It's a religion that comes to weed out the, the evil and to regulate human conditions that we cannot deny. So let me reply to this, yeah. because he keeps trying to talk about politics. And the reality is there is no more uh, sort of white flag signal than when someone tries to draw in politics when we're talking about the religious system. We're talking about the example of Muhammad and the example of Jesus and the paradigms that those establish. Muslims, as he has just admitted, have not abolished slavery. They haven't come to abolish slavery. Islam isn't here to abolish slavery, to have slaves. Islam permits him to have slaves. And in terms of having those slaves, what we have is a problem. We have a problem of a system that will license license the owning of other human beings as a moral good. Let me give you an example, quoting another hadith, another example of Muhammad. And I want you to commentate on this example. So among them was a woman from the Banu Fazara. She was wearing a leather coat. With her was her daughter, who was one of the prettiest girls in Arabia. I drove them along until I brought them to Abu Bakr, who bestowed that girl upon me as a prize. So we arrived in Medina. I had not yet disrobed her. This is one of Muhammad's followers. I had not yet disrobed her when the messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, met me in the street and said, give me that girl, O Salama. I said, O Messenger of Allah, she has fascinated me. I had not yet disrobed her. When on the next day the Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him again, met me in the street, he said, O Salama, 
give me that girl, may God bless your father. I said, she is for you, messenger of Allah. By Allah, I have not yet disrobed her. The messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, sent her to the people of Mecca and surrendered her as a ransom for a number of Muslims who had been kept as prisoners at Mecca. Now please notice that the Muslim is appealing to Muhammad for the permission to disrobe his captured slave. The woman had just seen her fathers and her brothers and her cousins die, her people destroyed, her relatives enslaved. Do you think she wanted to have sex with him? Do you agree with Muhammad when he brought people back into slavery who had been released from slavery and used human beings as part of wider diplomatics. Okay. So basically, he said to uh, just before he started, he said, um, "Why is it that I bring politics into it? Why am I bringing all these other elements?" That... Okay, we'll make this the last round. Yeah. So he, he just said to me, um, what he said to the camera just a minute ago, "Why is it that I'm bringing all these other elements to uh, to this debate?" I'm doing this because reality is just that complex. Humans, human history and events are not just purely driven of theology, which obviously he's banking on. There's politics that is involved in it and there are other things that are involved in it. And that's why I'm bringing these things uh, because it's just that holistic. Secondly, this hadith that you mentioned before, just by the sound of it, because you brought this hadith without an explanation and you just left it there, I find him extremely strange. I find him extremely strange hadiths and I do not know the authenticity of it. So I cannot comment on it. Um, the other thing that you said was that I find a fallacy. You said that you've mentioned all these classical Christians who were freeing slaves, but yet in the 15th century, you still have slavery persistent by Christians. In the 18th century, 19th century, in this country, husbands were selling the women and that's less than 300 years ago. So yes, you can be, we, 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 are, we celebrate uh, what, what, what human, humankind has achieved and totally, and I don't see this as a, a Western East divide. That's not how I understand uh, history. History is an obligation of societies it influences like politics that you're trying to run away from. I'm just saying to the viewer, look, understand reality holistically. What he's doing is dog whistling. He's throwing all these things and he's keep going back to these points. But he doesn't actually go on to what I'm saying. When I was trying to explain to you, for example, the uh, nuance on how classical scholars, contemporary scholars, even lawmakers, secular lawmakers, when they make laws, how nuanced their approach is when they pass uh, laws. My reply? Wait, wait, yes. Okay. Now, this man over here, he brought a book where there was ISIS on it. And this is what I'm trying to say. No, 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 no. I, I brought a book with a, a woman. Yeah, yeah, a, a yeah, Yezidi, yeah, yeah. A Yazidi woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They will see it. A Yazidi woman. Yeah. Sure, sure. And thank, you, thank you. Brother, so brother, let him finish, finish, please. And I also said, please, please, please. I also said, I'm not worried about the name. I'm saying these are real people. Just, That's fine. Just, I understand. Just, just, no, no, no. Just please, like, we're in a debate. I just, I just, I, know, I, just, I, just, I just pointed at you. One more thing, one more thing. No, no, no. Just please. like the woman shouldn't have brought him its time. This is a real woman. No, no, no. Thank you, thank you very much. So, this, this is, this is the perfect example. Sorry, would you um, pause it because he interrupted. This is the example that I'm trying to say why. No, no I, just, I just pointed, I just pointed at you. Just let, just give him a minute. Book, just give him a minute. Explain why your understanding of this situation. Bro, just go on with yeah, your minute. Yeah. Why this? Why his this book and his understanding of what is happening in the Middle East is limited and it's not holistic enough. Now, ISIS or whatever, call what you want. It's a vigilante group that is not supported by no government. In fact, there are certain people who say they're um, supported by um, uh, Western and, and other entities in the Middle East as proxy wars, right? These things are not happening under state rules or state sanctioned activities. These are groups just like neo-Nazis with, with an ammunition power of an army who go into places and, 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 and enslave human beings and kill human beings and those people 
Let's not isolate that it was only the Yazidi women who been killed here. There's plenty of Muslim or, or, or enslaved. That, even that. Keep going. But that there are also millions of millions, up to millions of Muslim who've been killed by these groups. Now we have to distinguish that this time. So let, 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 I'm going to do my. I'm going to do a wrap up yeah. because Dawood is trying to conflate politics with religion. What I am pointing, what I am pointing out is the politics of Muhammad. This is the politics of Muhammad. Muhammad had the opportunity to abolish slavery. Muhammad had the opportunity to tell his followers, free all your slaves. Muhammad had the opportunity to say, it is not permissible to you to buy or sell slaves. I mean, he did it with alcohol. And, bacon. and he did it with bacon. If you can do it with alcohol and bacon, you can do it with human beings. But he didn't. And he didn't because it didn't suit him to do so. And the fact is that for 1400 years, since the time of Muhammad, Muslims of the peninsula. It's not like the Byzantines successfully invaded it or the Crusaders successfully invaded it. The Muslims owned it all to themselves for 1400 years and in the entirety of that time they never stopped slavery. Why? Because they had no legitimate reason to from an Islamic perspective. Perfect. But every single century I can point to Christians fighting against slavery including in the time when Christians were committing slavery. Christians abolished slavery in this country Dawood in the 11th century. So why did it continue? It started again. It's something different because of the enlightenment, because Christians in Europe started to abandon their faith. And as they started to abandon their faith because of the enlightenment, that's when you see slavery start again. It's as, as Europe moves away from Christianity that you start to see slavery reemerge. If you knew European history, you would know that, but you don't. Correct. I did not interrupt you. I did not interrupt you. In the 16th century, we were Christians. I did not interrupt you. Sorry. So, my point to you is, Dawood, you've, I've been out, you've asked on multiple occasions. Are you proud of the rights that Muhammad gave you? You dodged the question. I've answered it. You, you've, well, the cameras will see. I had to ask you multiple times. You haven't answered that question. I am proud of the example of Jesus. Every right that he has given me, I want to celebrate and do. And everything that he has prohibited me, I want to stop doing. Muhammad gave Muslims the right to own other people as property according to Sharia law. And you couldn't say you were proud of that. And that is your conscience telling you you need a better prophet and his name is Jesus. Why are you not actually saying what I said to you? It's like almost ignoring it. It's not, it's not good. Tell me, tell me you're proud. Tell me you're proud of the right to own people as property. But why? Can, can you please, uh, this is uh, about slavery. Can you uh, pl please uh, read about it? Yeah, next week you can talk to him. Look, <laughs> look. Tell me you're proud of it. Look. Tell me you're why, proud to own another human being as a piece of property. Why are you setting criteria for me? Why are you setting criteria? Why am I supposed to follow your criteria okay. to begin with? This is an Islamic criteria. Huh? Muhammad gave you the right to yeah. own another human being as a piece of property. Okay. Are you proud of that right? So if I don't do it, I'm not a Muslim. Is that what you're implying? No, I'm just asking you if no, you're no, proud no, of it. No, but that's what I'm trying to say to you. I'm saying to you, it's not necessary for me Are to be proud of it. Are you proud of the it's right? It's not necessary for me. It does not make me a Muslim. It does not define my religion and my belief to God. So Muhammad doesn't define necessary. your religion? It's not necessary. Muhammad doesn't define Slavery your religion. Slavery and its laws that came with it are reactionary. You have just said, Muhammad, provisional. you have just said yeah. that it is not necessary to your religion. It's not necessary for me to be believe is that. Muhammad, I, I is it. Muhammad your normative example? Yeah. Did Muhammad have slaves? Yeah, but... Did Muhammad what, trade in slaves? Had, the, the Prophet Muhammad had also seven wives. Am I allowed to have seven wives because of that? No. Are you permitted to have slaves? I, I am. If, the, if, the, if I live in a context where it is, I am, yes. Are you proud of that right? 
Why should I be proud of it if it's not applying to me? Brother, can't you hear your conscience? It's the reason why conscience. you can't say it no. is because your conscience yeah. is telling you you need a better prophet. Okay, no, I'm not saying that. Look, I'm just trying to explain to you is this. Look, if I was, I've already actually answered your question. I said, look, if I live in a scenario where it, it is, it's normative, then yes, of course I'm going to be proud. And who makes gonna, it normative? I'm not going to society. And who, what dominates that society if it's Islamic? Well, it could, it, no, it's not just Islamic. No, hold on. It's not just Islamic. If you've just said society yeah. normalizes it, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. So if Islam is the dominant force in society, yeah. Yeah. then slavery becomes normative. Possibly, not always. Right, do you not see a problem with that? Well, why, why, why would you I talk, You talked about ISIS. You said yeah. that they're this rogue vigilante group. Yeah. They had slaves. The Ottoman Empire had slaves. Yeah. Muhammad had slaves. Yeah. Do you see the line there? Yeah. So but when ISIS do it, is it wrong? It's wrong because... When the Ottomans do it, is it wrong? No, but hold on. Are you comparing ISIS no, no, to the no. Ottomans? Yes. How? When I, I'm, I'm on, on slavery. When no, ISIS... Slavery because yeah. No, no, you don't know. I'm doing it using yeah. slavery. When ISIS kidnapped Christians and had them as slaves, is it wrong or right? It was wrong. When the Ottoman Empire kidnapped Christians and made them slaves, is it wrong or right? There's probably some cases where it was wrong, yes. Probably. So some there are some cases, cases where it was right. Yeah. Right, so yeah. there you go. That's the problem of Islam. And why do you say it's right? Because when Muhammad did it, no. was it right or wrong? No. Yeah, when I'm, Muhammad I'm, did it, I'm, was it I'm, right I'm or wrong? Saying, I'm saying that. I'm saying when Muhammad did it, that was. Was it right or wrong? Let me ask it about, about the Ottomans. You did. You said it was right. Yeah, but uh, let me explain why. But the reason why is because the Ottomans was an autonomous state that was respected throughout the globe. No, they weren't respected, they were hated. Yes, they were. They, they were, were hated. They were respected throughout the they globe. They were hated. So, so you're telling me about all these travelogues of these um, diplomats who went to the, the Ottoman periods are like what made up? The Ottomans were I, seen uh, as enemy of possible. countless cultures, that's, that's of countless possible. peoples. That's, they were a despised empire no, because possible. they were a despicable no, empire. So what, that's not true. So what about, what about the Roman, uh, so what, Roman so, Empire? So, 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 so what about Elizabeth? Hold on, what about Elizabeth? in Ang England then, Queen Elizabeth, she was in alliance with the Moroccans who in, in turn were in the alliance with the Ottomans. So that's what I'm trying to say, you have to be very careful how you portray history. Another thing, the Ottomans weren't possibly not liked because they're the enemy or they're their rivals. Who likes their rivals anyway? But that doesn't that doesn't take away we're talking that about doesn't, that doesn't the take ottoman away. slave trade no no hold on hold on that's what we're talking we about. Just talk about why do you want to isolation? talk about everything no why do you know why isis no, do it it's wrong on, the ottomans do it it's right the reason right. the reason why i'm not talking about isolated um ele uh, elements like a system like slavery is because slavery predicates not only on slavery itself slavery is a system that is based upon it is supported by church it's supported by, by the caliphate and it, and, it, and it's supported by policy makers. By Muhammad. You said that... Muhammad was a you, policy you, maker. You said that slavery... Muhammad was a policy maker. Thank you, very, thank you very much. You said, you, said that the, you said that Christianity or that slavery emerged with the, with the um, Enlightenment period. Now explain to me, in, 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 1650, in, in 1620, uh, 1659, when the first settlers settled in 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 in, in the south of, of of north america protestants settlers pietism was their religion calvinists who owned slaves the founding fathers deeply religious man who believed that it was the natural cause to own slaves yeah. when muhammad First had one, slaves was it two. right or wrong when muhammad had slaves it was right yeah so when muhammad took slaves back into slavery that their masters had released was six, that right or wrong five. i do not i i, I, don't, agree. Six, I don't know five. That, that hadith sounds you don't strange. agree do you no the hadith in your heart the hadith that would they're sahih muslim and sahih al-bukhari so so uh, now so what so do you remember one of my other reasons one second so well it, right let's just move back a bit let's just move back a bit move back come with me that would move back a bit 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 right there we go that would yeah. Right? You're, you're, yeah. you're saying, yeah. you're saying, remember one of my other reasons for rejecting yeah. Islam? Is that even when we use servant, Sahih slave. Hadith, yeah. like Sahih Muslim servant, and Sahih Al-Bukhari, yeah. yeah, that I said, 
You remember because you were listening in, I know you were. Yeah, I was. Yeah? I said that we see Muslims chuck those hadith under the bus. Yeah. I yeah. quoted Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih al Muslim about Muhammad taking slaves back into slavery. Yeah. And you want to reject Sahih hadith. And the reason why you want to reject want Sahih to hadith. But that's what you're doing. Because so, Quran that is what you're doing. Say, Those particular ones, I free. do not know. Exactly, because exactly. Quran, I do not know. You're because embarrassed Quran, by your own no, hadith. No, I don't know. I don't know. They are Sahih Muslim, Sahih Al Bukhari. Uh, Bukhari Either Bukhari throw Bukhari them Bukhari away and death. throw Muhammad along with them, yeah. or embrace them and say you're proud of the example of Muhammad. Can I, but Muhammad, the, the Muhammad, the Muhammad, yeah. Muhammad took slaves back into slavery that had been released by their masters. Was that right or wrong? Okay. It's wrong. Um, you, okay. It's wrong. Okay. Because Quran you need Jesus, and Quran, Yahweh. And Quran, you need yeah, Jesus, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you something. And that's why you, the you, prophet you was said to me taught that by others. Okay. Habibi. No, Habibi. You can, <laughs> you, look, this man knows you. This, no, this man knows your name. Which I was supposed to talk to him, and know, you come he, along. Yeah, and he, didn't and want, he just he didn't want to talk to you. Okay, using you, using you, using you for whatever you want. You just have to press on with the heckler. I do it every week. Okay, you said you said a sign Hadi. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now I don't know if you know this. You probably know, maybe not. Look, the, the hadith. Have you have you ch checked the isnat? Are you are you about to no, say? No, no. Hold on, hold on. Have you checked the isnat of, of the, the thing? Right. A sahih hadith. No, no. No, no. Please, please answer what I said to you. Did you check the isnat of the hadith? No, I trust. I, I, okay. Did you know? Did you? Did, know? did Musahi, a Muslim no. check the isnat? No, no. No, did she know? Did, did, did Bukhari a Muslim check the Islam? Okay, but did she know that also, yeah, there are certain... There are I'm so sorry to disturb you guys, I'm going to pray, can you keep yeah. an eye on this talk? Did she know that there are well-established right. hadith that everyone says is sahih, 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 yeah. and it's, a, it's a Muslim and it's a Bukhari, yeah. and then when you go into the... And then you go into this night and you see, oh, it's disconnected. So I don't you see that that proves my point. No, it doesn't prove your point. What was let my point about that? Go on, go on, Dawood. Go on. Sorry, the sorry. The point I'm trying to I make. Apologize. Yeah, the, I apologize. Now I apologize. Actually, you know what I mean? yeah. the, the point I'm trying to make is the hadith, yeah, on its own itself sounds strange because I know that the Prophet Muhammad Sassim would encourage plenty of times in the Sira you find that he would encourage the manumission of slaves um, himself freeing slaves Aisha Radnalha she's known to have freed 200 slaves just on her own Aisha now, strange I'm not saying it's not true okay I'm not saying you lying I'm just saying I find it strange therefore what I'm going to do I'm going to go back and do my back my, my, my homework right um, so there was something else that you said I forgot sorry okay so let me reply to what you're saying yeah. because you're proving another point if you remember when you were listening in yeah. I said that Muslims can't agree about which hadiths are reliable and yeah, that an even extent. when we use the hadiths that they say are reliable like the Sahih hadiths which are checked by Bukhari and Muslim who check the Isnads and check the Matin and do the whole hadith science that even today Muslims will chuck those hadiths under the bus, they will distance themselves from those hadiths because they find them embarrassing or they find them against their own conscience. And that is what Dawood is doing right now. He is distancing himself from Sahih Muslim hadith and Sahih Bukhari hadith in which Muhammad told that slaves who had been released by their masters needed to be taken back into slavery. And the reason why he is doing so, Dawood, is because you are a better man than your prophet and you know, you know that if these hadiths are true, yeah. then Muhammad was a horrible man and you don't want to be a horrible man and I applaud you for it, but I say that you should follow Jesus. That logic yeah. out of Islam yeah. to a better example, yeah. the paradigm of Jesus okay. Christ. Yeah. Jesus. Because people, if you're saying that yeah. even your Sahih Hadiths you cannot trust, no, I don't, I didn't uh, say that. Hadith I didn't is say not holy. You're saying that the they Quran sound suspicious. Yeah, they sound strange. Yeah. Right, but the point of the matter is. Oh, no. My friend, these okay. are hadith. Okay. This is your literature okay. I'm using. Okay. The hadith comes Identified the by Prophet your scholars that you say the were the amazing the people yeah. who collected these hadith. Yeah. And they're called Sahih for a reason. Yeah. 
What no, does Sahih mean for the camera? Every single hadith. Authentic. Not authentic. authentic. authentic but, but, trustworthy. Yeah, but some there you go. But you don't want to trust it, do you? No, not, not all of them. Okay. There's 7,000 hadiths. I'm talking to Dawood. I'm talking to you. <laughs> all I was saying, yeah? yeah. All I was saying is... There's 7,000 hadiths. It's impossible that all hadiths are right. There are different. There must be false you know that and books, authentic right? and, uh, and authentic. every every scholar has it. It's, that's why that's the differences, and that's why some people don't agree. Because every scholar has its own uh, methodology and tolerance how to look at hadith. First of all, even donkeys. Um, I don't. You see, you're getting involved in the argument again, bro. Let, let, it's not, it's not picking up until. Okay. Oh, sorry. Go on. Um, so I'm, I'm not denying the hadith. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm not wrong. And I'm not. And, and the reason why I'm saying, the reason why I'm saying that they sound strange. I should actually take that back. They don't sound strange. But what they do is they. Content. They, they, from, from, from the little knowledge I have, it does not seem consistent with the prophet. And also they seem very su surface, surface based. What, what do I mean by that? Every hadith. I would love to read this hadith with commentary and I would love to read the hadith with its historical context. Okay, what happened? Why did the Prophet say that? All this hadith is saying right now is just telling you there was a situation where there was uh, someone was freeing slaves and the Prophet came and said like, no, free those two and those two. That's all it's saying. It's just that, right? I want to know why and, and the background maybe and then, and then I can come back to you and be like, oh, so the hadith, the reason why that was the reason is because those two other uh, slaves were taken forcefully from someone else. You know, I'm just speculating. I'm saying that there could be another reason why that happened that way. So I just want to look at the hadith. I'm not denying them. If they're Sahih, we say they're Sahih Bukhari, then they're probably authentic. Sahih Muslim. Yeah, Sahih Muslim. They're probably authentic. But I just want to have a, a bit more. Um, but no, let, 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 let me reply. Because what you're saying is yeah. it doesn't sound like the Prophet. It, it sounds suspect because it doesn't sound like the Prophet. Not consistent, yeah. yeah. But, the, but well, I mean, firstly, that's another problem with the Hadith literature is it's full of inconsistencies. Yeah. But the second problem with but that, the second problem with that, hadith. the second problem with that yeah. is also the Sirat literature confirms that Muhammad practiced slavery. Yeah, yeah. The Sirat yeah. literature confirms that Muhammad tortured people. The Sirat tortured. literature, yes. <laughs> the Sirat literature confirms that Muhammad had people assassinated. The Sirat literature confirms confirms that Muhammad waged war against um, yeah. other people. So if you're going to, and also Dawood, yeah. the fact of the matter is, if you go and use Sirat literature in the game of trumps with Hadith literature, Hadith literature wins over Sirat literature. Hadith literature is what you use to understand the Quran, not Sirat literature. So your defense is weak. But your defense is also flawed because what you're really saying is I don't want to believe that Muhammad is the kind of person that would take a slave back into slavery after he's been Anyone who does real history goes off what the sources say. And those sources say that there was a master who owned slaves and he let them go free. And then Muhammad stepped in and he said, no, bring them back into slavery. Yeah, and I want to know the context of that. That's so, all I'm saying. I want to know the context. The Quran also says, the Quran also says, the Quran also says that you can own women as slaves and have sex with them. No, that is a right given to you in the Quran that I read to you the with right the source. Hand the right hand possession. The right hand possession. Permitted to you are your wives and those that your right hand possess. Clearly, if and those that your right hand possess is not also your wives because that would be naming the same category twice and that would make the, the Quran guilty of being just Bumble yeah. jumble nonsense. Okay, you know that verse, for example, yeah, what your right hand possess. As as someone who lives in the 21st century in London, how would I how would I implement that? Right, but the reason why you can't implement that is because you live in a society that was influenced by Christians like William Wilberforce, who stopped slavery. However, you go to Sudan, you can do that. You go to Mauritania. To Saudi Arabia, you can do that. Yeah. What do those three countries have in common? Because it ain't ethnicity, it ain't language, it ain't economy, it ain't culture. Well, it's What's the one thing that they've got in common? What's the one thing they've got in common? What religion? Islam. There you go. That's the problem. Perfect. This is what I'm trying to say. Look at what you've done I, I to think the world. you're brilliant. I think you, you're brilliant, and I think not brilliant, but you, you're good, right? I think you're very good. But what what I would love for you to do, as someone who speaks, and and, 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 you, and someone who wants to be scholarly. 
you really have to start to apply the holistic thing. When you say, for example, it's just religion, it's not religion. For example, there's a report that came out recently by the BBC and it looked at um, slavery in, uh, in Kuwait. And they were selling, look, honestly, I'm pretty Slavery honest. in Kuwait. They're selling slaves, they're selling slaves on Instagram and all these. Uh, you can go and have a look on, 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 on BBC and that's accounts. What's the primary religion of the Kuwait? Oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go to religion, the, 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 the report focus on, on the economy. Now, why is it so... Because it's the BBC. And the BBC wouldn't blame Islam for anything. No, 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 even no, no, a jihad. No. Perfect. But you see this one trying to say, I think, I think you have serious blind spots and I, I ask Allah to, to help you to, to remove them. But the point that was, I brought Kuwait into this is because in Kuwait, yeah, uh, the, 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 the economy permits it. Why? Every, I think every every second person has a mate or something. Every, every, four, four, uh, two and four women have uh, have a mate in Kuwait. That what? And, well, has that to do with the religion? No, it has to do with uh, the possibility. Thank you. It has to do with the possibility and the capabilities that they, they, they can afford such things. It's to do with the policies that the, the government has been, the Kefaya um, um, policies, sponsoring to have a sponsor and come into the country. So this is what I'm trying to say to you. When you do this, when you just look at the religion, you are just looking at one aspect. And because there's some truth in that aspect, you're misconstruing reality. What I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to do is like, look, have religion and be critical of religion, but then also look at all the other facets. Okay, let me reply to that something. point. Let me reply to that point. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thing. Yes, of course. The last thing is, for example, and you see, you see where the, the fallacy comes in, you do this the same thing when you want to validate something. You say, for example, Christianity, was the force, the driving force that abolished slavery. No, it isn't. If you talk to if, if you talk to any historian, they will tell you one of the major reasons, and that's why the government got involved and paid out on reparation to slavers, was because of the economy. The economy changed. Oh, you know what? There are these Quakers, they've been saying for 200 years now to us to abolish slaves. You know what? Time permits it now. Let's pay out all Can the I slavers. Reply? Let's pay out all the let slavers. Me, let me reply. David Cameron is one of them. Let me, let me reply. Family, because yeah. unfortunately, Dawood, you don't know church history. I know church history. It depends. I don't know. The reality know is, the reality is, as far back as the 10th and 11th century, so this is still in feudal times, yeah. when the economy was dependent on serfdom, slave labor, yeah. Yeah. Christians were abolishing slavery. What do, you mean by that? what do you mean by that? At the same time, yeah. at the same time, Muslims were enslaving people. Define now, that. Define what you mean by that. Slavery. The what? idea that I can own you as a possession and you are my property. That was abolished in numerous Christian countries right from the 5th century onwards. The Byzantine Empire yeah. abolished slavery. It abolished State, the, by the state, or were there people in, in, in or were there individual saints who were in, in, over the course or the course over yeah. the course of church history, both but over Jesus, the course, of, course uh, of church no, history, no, both. Century. Century. yeah, 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 stop. Jesus, one second, one second, look, 12, so one second, yeah. Dawood, Dawood, yeah. you, you made a seven. claim. I'm gonna have to shout, I'm not shouting at you, I'm just yeah. shouting over him, yeah, right. Are you listening? So, you yeah. made a claim that I'm being narrow. That I'm only looking at the religious aspect. Theology, yeah. But let me just demonstrate why you're wrong in your counter thesis. Because on numerous occasions in the course of the last hour or two that we've discussed this topic, I have used Saudi Arabia and the Arabian Peninsula as an example. Why did I do that? Very deliberately. Because we both know that in terms of what has fashioned the culture, economy and politics of that peninsula since the time of Muhammad it has been Islam. Yeah. Which means that in that region of the world, if Islam had the ability and rationale to abolish slavery, yeah. you would be able to point to the example of Saudi Arabia as having done so. And at no point at any time has it or have you. Yeah. It didn't abolish slavery, the Saudi Arabian state, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which I know is not 1400 years old, but my logic stands that that area of the world never abolished slavery, either by the direction of a government, either in Damascus or in, um, in, um, in Constantinople, nor by the will of the people, i.e. the people themselves saying, it might be legal for me to do this, but I don't want to do it. Which means that Islam never transformed their hearts to want to do it. Islam 
failed, it failed culturally, it failed economically, it failed politically, it failed socially, and one example that demonstrates this complete failure is the example of slavery. Where is your caliphate today established by Mohammed? Okay. Look, first of all, I, and I said this at the beginning of this whole debate, I said, look, I am very careful when I make statements and I will be honest when I see wrong, even amongst the Muslims. I'm not going to hide things here. One thing, I wanted, one thing I want to say is this. The slavery that took place in the West and the slavery that took place in the Western context has its own genealogy and it has its own DNA. It's, it was totally different how it was manifested. Remember I was saying that? Yeah, you did say that. I have a picture on my phone that I don't, on my phone died, okay? And I, f I found that. We'll just believe you. Go yeah. on. I have this amazing, I found it fascinating. It was a painting of a merchant, an Ottoman merchant and his slave. And the slave, and, and the, the article was about white slavery that many people don't talk about. Yeah, there, was, there is such thing as white slavery that took place. Those of us who know church history know all about the slave trade of yeah. the Ottomans. Yeah. Because we no. suffered it. Yeah. And, and there's many, many things that I disagree with what the Ottomans have done. I, I will say this here. Now, the picture is of the merchant and his slave. And you know what's so funny? You wouldn't be able to tell who the slave is and who the master is. Okay? So when you say things like, well, the Ottomans didn't abolish it, it's because their perception of slavery was totally different. We cannot compare the two. Yes, we, we can. No, we can't. Why not? Look, one, one reason, I can give you one. Now, you said that slavery was started by the Enlightenment period. Now, let me actually correct you and teach you some history that you may not be aware of, not because you're stupid, you're a very intelligent man, but maybe because you're just not aware of it. Pope Nicholas V, he issued a papal in 1990, 1492, I think, or 1495. Why, what's a papal? A papal for the Muslims is an equivalent of a fatawa. And the fatawa was based upon what? It was based upon, and this is what I say, politics. Alfonso V, he was the king of Portugal, approached the Pope in 14, uh, 1492. And he said to the Pope, Pope, the Saracens, who are the Saracens? The Muslims. The animists and the pagans in Africa, they have this gold trade and they're benefiting from it. <coughs> he is obviously a politician. You should subjugate them to Christianity. <coughs> What did the Pope do? The Pope, and it's called the Bal, right? It's very famous, it's a very famous paper. All of you, go and Google it. Pope Nicholas V, the PayPal, or the Bull. And he issues, and in it, and we have it to this day. He says, and hereby, by the decree, I issue that Alfonso V has the right to go to enslave the Saracens, to enslave the pagan Africans and the animists. And you know what that is? If you know the transatlantic slave trade, you know that the Portuguese were the first Europeans to, to come to Africa and to torment and to destroy the lives of millions of people. Millions of people. I'm obsessed and I hate ISIS. I say this in the camera. I hate ISIS. My heart, if I could, I would fight against them. Yeah? They've killed 100,000 people. The transatlantic slave trade has killed 12 to 30 million um, humans. And that's that, that these are conservative um, numbers. Now, I've just shown you how. I'd like to reply to this, yeah, David. I've just shown you how a government and organization systematically decreed, allowed a state, a European state, to go and enslave other people. And that is, if you ask me, the Pope is the head of the Vatican and has been the head of the Vatican for a very long time. If you ask me that history, clearly points out to you and shows you the differences and in and, 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 and the slave trade. And I'm not and I'm Okay, not. can I reply? Sorry. Are you proud so, of so, the so, Pope as a Christian? So one second. One second. He has just compared which Pope was it? Pope Nicholas. He has just <laughs> made Pope Nicholas equal to Mohammed. No, so no. in other words, a bad example of a Pope is as good as Mohammed. That's what he just did. No, because Mohammed permitted slaves. Mohammed permitted his followers to invade lands that were not their own and suppress Christians. Do you know what it's called? It's called dimitude. You don't believe me what dimitude looks like? Go and speak to the Greeks. They had 400 years of it shoved down their throats. 
Go and speak to the Romanians. Go and speak to the Hungarians. Go and speak to the Albanians. Go and speak to the Lebanese Christians. Go and speak to the Georgian Christians. Go and speak to the Armenian Christians. Go and speak to the Coptic Christians. Go and speak to the Ethiopian Christians. All of these groups, Dawood, suffered because Mohammed Sharia law permitted Muslims to go into their lands to steal them, to kidnap them, to oppress them and suppress them. Now his example was a Pope. I'll stand here and say that that Pope was a failure of a man and as a Christian. All you have to do is say Mohammed was the failure of a man and as a prophet. That's what you have to do Dawood. I've condemned the Pope, you condemn the prophet. Perfect. Now, let's just say this. I, I want to give an attestation by a scholar. His name is John Azuma. John Azuma is not some white Caucasian apologist. He is an African scholar and he has studied the slave trade. The book that I am quoting, Dawood, for you is the legacy of the Arab. Sorry, I can't read it because I'm getting old. The Arab. The Arab what? The Arab, I can't even read it. Arab something in Africa. Page 156 to 162. John Azuma states. Now you stop listening, but that's fine. No, 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 I haven't, I haven't. In the areas like North Africa, the Middle East and Turkey, black slaves, this is black slaves of Arab Muslims, did the meanest and the hardest work. Now bearing in mind, his argument is that the, the slavery of the Muslims was this benign, nice thing where you no, couldn't tell the slave from the free man. But John Azuma has gone in to study the historical records, not just one photograph, and this is his conclusion. The first generation and plantation slaves in Muslim lands was as harsh and cruel as any other such system which means that the Islamic slavery was just as brutal and savage and dark and as twisted as the colonial slave trade. But here's a difference. The colonial slave trade lasted for 300 years. The Islamic slave trade has lasted for 1400 years and it is still going on today in Sudan, in Mauritania, in Saudi Arabia and without any prompting from me, Kuwait. And what do all those countries have in common? Is it their economy? No. Is it their culture? No. Is it their ethnicity? No. Is it their political leadership? No. What do all four of those countries have in common? Islam. That's the problem. I am not being narrow. We've already talked about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, the socio-economic political context of that peninsula has been dominated by Islam for 1400 years. Muslims, even if it was not passed in law that they should not have had slaves, if their heart was truly transformed, they could have freed them. They could have ceased to participate. Like Muslims don't participate in drinking alcohol in our Kufar state. But they didn't. They did continue to sell and buy slaves. Why? Because Islam failed to change their hearts. Am I being unfair? Am I being unrealistic? Where is the fault in my logic? No, you're yeah. right about that. Um, yeah, slavery wasn't ended by Islam. I agree. Um, uh, can, can, can you show him uh, the reference where Jesus confirmed uh, slavery? Uh, can, can you can you just uh, um, so let again? Us I, I don't I don't think that. Um, can, you said, can you let him? You said yeah yeah okay. Uh, you, you, said, exactly, yeah. you said quite a lot of stuff. You said you said quite a lot of stuff. Um, but then you said like oh there, there's no similarities and uh, well let's deal with a point that's close to your counterpoint. Your counterpoint was I'm just focusing on religion. So deal with the example of the Arabian Peninsula where Muslims could have just said look we're not participating in the slave trade but did where Islam has dominated every aspect of that society politically economically socially morally in every possible way in art in, in culture in everything is it it has 
It has. From the time of from the time of Muhammad, Islam has dominated Saudi Arabia. No, it hasn't. What about? Oh my gosh. No, no, no. That's but that's the point I'm trying to make. Look, before you we, we go on, you said something along the lines of. Um, Let's deal with Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. You said yeah. You mentioned Saudi and you mentioned Sudan. And you said, well, the, their economies aren't. It's not the 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 defective factor of why slavery exists. Do you know of Sudanese economy? And you know what? You know how. Um, He's making the right. Do you know how the, the economy is built? In their, their, their economy is pretty much a modern economy. Yeah, but, but did you know that Sudan, for example, also heavily depends on oil, just like Saudi? So you're saying it's oil that leads to slavery? No, I'm not saying that. It's a bull. That's what you're trying to say? No, no, no. So what are you saying then? I am saying to you that you're making loads of loads of uh, points that I'm sure that if we were to go into the details... Mauritania doesn't have an economy built on oil, it still has slavery, so yeah, what's your then, point? But, 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 but what else are they... Uh, uh, built on Islam. See, that's what I'm trying to say. So Mauritania has its has its econ has a non-existent economy. To so we've got we've got multi-billion yeah. economy in Saudi Arabia. We've got a, a failing economy yeah. in in Sudan, yeah. and we've got zero economy in Mauritania. Yeah. So we've got the highest level, the medium level, and the lowest level of economy, yeah. and we still got slavery. Why? And then you so and that's and, and, that, and that's what how you're comparing economy. You do know that certain economies, um, the, 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 it doesn't matter how the GTB, uh, GDP is. That would the that, 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 let me finish that that, that that its manifestation, yeah, can create situations where certain things are viable. To do. For example, let me tell you Mauritania and Saudi Arabia, those two. In Saudi Arabia, you are able, because people are extremely wealthy, okay, you have the ability to own mates. In the UK, you can't. That would deal with my point. I'm dealing with your point, but you have to allow me to be nuanced. My, my if, point? If I can't be nuanced, then I'm not, I, I don't feel I'm being intellectual. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I want to be nuanced. I want to I want to open up this conversation so that people can watch and be like, oh, what that would say that, let me go and watch. Yeah. And then they can learn something, and maybe not. Maybe they can prove me wrong. So what I'm trying to say to you, look, it doesn't mean that economies they resemble each other based upon their GTB, uh, GDP. They can resemble each other in different forms. For example, like I said to you, in Saudi Arabia, every like or on Kuwait, every two and four women own mates. This is something that we don't have here. The economy allows that. Then, then. Then in Mauritania, in Mauritania, right? And actually, children. This disparity, the disparity between humans, that you would have power clans versus like immigrants and all these things. It facilitates these things to happen. Wait one second. That's what I'm trying to say. But the point is, so the it's, point it's, is it's that if the, their economies have dissimilarity. The dissimilarity but is sufficient enough to eliminate economy as the causal factor. Have you, have you just, what did I just say to you? I wanted to see if you understood what I feel. You were saying that, that's a good point. You, were, you were saying that the, 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 the structures within those societies yeah. Permit yeah. the hosting, the holding of other people as property. So in, in yeah. Arabia, yeah. it's because yeah, yeah they're rich, yeah. and in Mauritania, yeah. it's because they're yeah. poor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did I hear you right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, but I'm now, saying it's not the defining factor. Right. but it's one and one. Right, one second. Now, now let me demonstrate why your logic. Yeah. Uh, that would. Yeah. Right. You strike me as someone who's sincerely trying to defend his faith, yeah. right? And I, I can respect that. Um, no, one second, one I, second. I don't feel defensive. I, 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 you, you're yeah. trying to defend your prophet yeah. from the evidence, and I get that. What I'm saying to you, though, is, right, the reason why in Saudi Arabia someone can own a maid as a slave is because yeah. the government does not make it illegal yeah. and does not enforce a law of illegality. Okay. The reason why in Mauritania someone yeah. can own someone as a slave is because the government doesn't make it illegal and in the case of Mauritania probably doesn't even have the resources to impose the law. But that is not true in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Saudi Arabia has the money, has the means and has the ability. It's a well-organized state. Yeah. It could abolish slavery if it wanted to. Yeah. The people could refuse to participate. In it, yeah. But they don't. Yeah. Now what's that pointing to? Yeah. It's pointing to a historical precedent that has established something in culture that people think is acceptable. But has that, that to do is with the, Islam? Yes, it has. So why aren't there slaves in Senegal? To, because they aren't as good Muslims as they are in Saudi Arabia. Oh, that's, see, so, that's your, that's your criteria. One second, one second, bro. One second, bro. What, one second. Saudi, Saudi, Senegal was colonized, right? Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Was Saudi Arabia colonized? Um, by it, Europeans. It depends how you want to define it. They were to an extent, yes. 1400 no, 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 years. 1400 years. 
the thing is you the bro the reason the reason why you want to whitewash history is because don't bite to him in the same way that i'm not biting to yaya don't bite to him ignore me stay focused on me like i'm focused on you yeah right stay focused on me like i'm focused on you for 1400 years islam dominated every aspect of the arabian peninsula okay it is not an accident that that culture still embraces slavery. Yeah, it is because of Islam. You could say that, but then I'll give you an example. In Senegal, it doesn't exist. Senegal was colonized by Europeans. Oh, you now you're doing the, the whole, uh, what, the, the, because the Europeans came to Africa. One second. Africa. We, we use slavery, we abolish slavery. Agreed? We abolish slavery. When we abolish slavery, our gunboats suppressed the Berber pirates who were taking slaves. Listen, yeah, Bob, I don't know, I don't know about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bob, French, French and British people, French and British people, when they decided, finally, they came, their conscience was woken up to abolishing slavery, they started imposing that around the world. Right, and I think that was right. When you colonize, colonize Islam dominated huge tracts of the world in the Ottoman Empire, and never abolished slavery, even though they had the chance and the opportunity. Okay, they never okay. took it. Okay, they but, never took it. But we, we remember, we, we established that already. I already said to you that the criteria of abolishing slavery, I'm saying, and this is why I believe the Quran is so superior, because the Quran is a book that is secular. So whenever something arises, so say, for example, today, Bob, look, we live in a time that it could change. 50 years from now, slavery could be the thing again. When that happens, Okay, I will be with the people who are trying to, who are going to fight with yourself because you feel I seem like you would be someone, right? Fight against the, that system, that slavery does not come back. But what I'm saying to you is that the Quran itself would have regulations how to deal with it. Do you remember the example I've shown you that fascination picture? There was an Ottoman merchant in his slave, and you would be able to tell who the slave was. The reason why I mentioned that was because, yeah, the reason, by the way, I forgot to say that. The reason why I mentioned that was because oh, that, the manifestation of slavery in society. It could have been different to how it was in Virginia or Mississippi with the lynching of people, right? I, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that the Ottoman slavery was better than the, uh, the, 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 the right side. I'm just saying they're different, and therefore when we compare them, because that's what we keep doing, we're not being very we intellectually not being as precise as we should be, because they like their manifestation, its time, its history, uh, its influence are totally different. Can I can I reply? Yeah. Sure. So my reply is this: I quoted you an attestation by a scholar who studied this very subject. And he has stated, having done research into the Islamic slave trade and of its treatment of black Africans, his conclusion was that it was every bit as brutal and as savage as the European slave trade. Every bit. John Azuma says that. That's not me. Go and read his book. Go and read his book, Dawood. Go and read his book. That's his attestation. Your argument is essentially based off a photo. Now, you're not one second. It's a snapshot, it's society, but I'm giving you the attestation of a scholar who's done in-depth research into more than just pictures and into more than just one picture. Yeah. He's gone into the records, he's gone into the, so the, the documents. So have I. Brother, the, so have the I. end of the day is, the end of the day is, yeah. this is the choice that faces you, Dawood, right? Because I, 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 I saw glimpses of the internal battle within you. I will lie, but you, I have no... The, look, the one I'm second. not defensive. One second. You, one second, Dawood, one second, Dawood, you, like you say that, you say that, but you yeah. had the opportunity to say on camera, the camera will testify to all of yeah. this, you had the opportunity on camera to say that you were proud of the rights that Mohammed gave you, and you declined to do so. No, I didn't. When I quoted, I when I, I quoted, didn't. when I quoted Mohammed having, bringing people back into slavery that were released, what did and I, I quoted Sahi Dawood and Sahi Abukari, your instinct was to distance yourself from your own literature and your own authorities because your conscience was telling you you don't want to be associated with that kind of man and I don't no. blame you. Why, why do I have to So, affirm? one why second, do I have to one second, one second. It's like black and white with One you. second. Why do I have to one, right, one second, bro. Sorry. Right, I am saying to you yeah. that you need to pick up the, the, the gospel, yeah. you need to pick up the Bible, you need to read it for yourself, and you need to read it without all the lies of the Dawah team. 
You need there's to read of, it. There's loads of beautiful read things it. in the Bible. I love read it. There's loads of things that in the Bible that I, I am amazed by. So have you got a Bible? I, I have a Bible at home. Okay. You got the wrong guy, yeah, brother. I'm not. That's fine. I, I don't have an inferior uh, What complex. I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, it's just how Dawood, it is. What I'm saying I'm nuanced is, and you don't like it. What, what I'm saying is, Dawood. No, yeah. it's not about you being nuanced. It's it about, is. It is because what was the definition of nuance? No, no, that's not about you being nuanced. I've got no problem oh, with you being nuanced. Not, okay. I got no problem with you being nuanced. Okay, because that's but what I'm doing. It's what the people will make their own judgment whether you wanted to distance yourself from Muhammad's example or not. I haven't. They can make their own judgment. I haven't. The camera, Dawood. Sorry. Let people Apologies. make their Apologies. own minds up. Apologies. Apologies. Let people make their own minds up. I've said what I've said. I've yeah. said you have. You said you haven't. Yeah. Let people watch the video. Let them decide for themselves. Sure. But the fact of the matter is, what this is, and, and this is what I leave you with, right? And I, it's what I leave everyone who's listened to this debate all the way through, especially if you're Muslim. You need to ask yourself in good conscience, can I follow the example of Muhammad in everything that he did? And if you can't, it's time to find yourself a better example. And if you look at Jesus and you can follow him in every example that he did, then it's time to follow him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, one second. Look, you need to well, pick up a Bible. You need to read it for yourselves without the lies of the Dawah team, without the, the, the script that Muslims hear in the masjid. And you need to come to conclusions independent of the lies you're told about the Christian faith. Okay. First of all, he said to follow the Prophet Muhammad with everything he did. Look, did our jurisprudence does not even allow us to do that. We can't even do that. Look, the Prophet Muhammad was no, sorry. allowed to take charity. Thank you. We are allowed to take charity, we, so we can't follow him in there. So this is what I'm trying to say. I feel like, again, I think you have huge potential and the critique, some of the critique you brought up today was valid. I will say that. But I also say that that because you make sweeping um, uh, statements that are incorrect and I showed you how incorrect you were. For example, the Enlightenment thing. You were like, oh, Enlightenment brought, brought, brought back slavery. I've shown you, and this is, everyone can go and research, in the 14th century that Pope Nicholas, who is, whether you like or not, he is part of Christian history, who sanctioned and a decree to Alfonso V to go and enslave Africans, in particular, Saracens, Muslims. Was that wrong? Huh? Well, what the Pope did, was um, it wrong? It was wrong, yeah, because I'm a Muslim. And when Muhammad yeah, did it, yeah. was it wrong? Um, depend no, it wasn't. Why would so it, when why the would Pope it? does it, it's wrong, yeah. but when Muhammad does it, it's right. Do you why? You're essentially that's not the reason your why. That's defense. Not the reason why. That's not the reason. Dawood, your Again, your look, defense. You can't, how are you commenting? How? Dawood, your Explain defense. Explain to me. Explain to Go me, on. please. Go on. Explain to me. How in the hell are you commenting on something like Pope Nicholas? We really don't even know he existed. Right. What you have to do now, first of all, is... Let me, let, let me back, reply. You have to go back and research this. Let me reply. Then right, rationalize it. And then you can say... So let me reply. You can't, you let can't me reply. use him. You can't use him as that evidence. Oh, but you compare No, I can. I and I'm going to explain him. why. I, I wasn't comparing Pope Nicholas, by the way, to the Prophet Muhammad Sassan. The reason why I brought up Pope Nicholas is because historically, he, he said something incorrect. It had nothing to do with the prophet. I will accept the correction. So what Dawood is right. I am no. wrong. I am wrong. No the reintroduction of slavery happened before the Enlightenment. But here's the problem. Dawood's essential defense of the prophet was, I'm a murderer, you're a murderer, so therefore no. I'm justified in being no. a murderer. No, that doesn't no. work. And he knows it doesn't work. Saying that if, if I am a liar, and you are a liar, does that make it justified that I am a liar? <laughs> if I am a murderer and you are a murderer, does it make it justified that I am a murderer? If I own slaves and you own slaves, does the fact that you own slaves make it right that I own slaves? You all heard it on camera. When Nicholas, Pope Nicholas, allowed, because you did, when no, Pope well, Nicholas, and I've accepted the historical correction. I've accepted the historical correction. I'm comparing. I'm, yeah. I'm comparing. Uh, tell me why my comparison. comparison. Why? Tell me why my comparison is wrong. You said on camera yeah. when Pope Nicholas allowed Catholic Christians to enslave Muslims, that was wrong. Yeah. Why? I am saying. Why? Why? I am saying. That's why. Then if it was wrong for Pope Nicholas. Why is it right for Muhammad to permit Muslims to own Christians as slaves? There's obviously a reason why. I Go on. There's obviously a reason why I think what Pope Nicholas did was wrong. So why is it right when Muhammad did it? No, the reason why Pope Nicholas, what he did was wrong, is because Pope Nicholas instructed um, Alfonso to go to places that were sovereign. There were sovereign states. Like Ottomans? No, they, they, they like were Mamluks. West, they were West Africans. Like Uthmans? 
Well, that's fine, that's fine. But I already said this. If you look at Islamic history, you'll find a lot of problematic things. So I have no problem with that. Did Muhammad permit Muslims to own Christians as slaves? Did he sanction it? Did he sanction it? Well, hold on. You, what do you mean? According to Sharia law, yeah. we've already got you on camera yeah. saying that you have the right to own other human beings as property. Woo! That, the camera will. There was a clause. There was a big clause. There, there, there was a very, very big clause. Can, clause. can, That's what I mean with nuance. can you, you with can you own Christians as slaves? According to Sharia law. Muslims as slaves, Dawood. Huh? Can you own Muslims no, as I slaves? Can't. Can you own Christians as slaves, Dawood? Fire warfare. Can you own Can you own Christians as slaves? Can I own Christians as slaves? He knows the answers. Yes. No, no, I'm trying to think. Let me think. Dawood, a Muslim can have another Muslim as a slave, bro. Huh? A if the, if the Christian a wants a war yeah. against no, Muslims, no, I'm saying it's, it's the Christian. No, it's, no, I'm saying as, as, as it's a warfare thing. We're saying the clause is slavery is done on the warfare. Now I'm, I won't do the apologetics thing. Yeah, no, it's Islam not is. Apologetic. Habibi, I'm not look, saying you're look, doing. Habibi, I'm not say, saying you're doing apologetics. No, no, I'm just saying. Let's Habibi, just be can you own a Christian Habibi, as a slave? Habibi, you can own a Christian. You can own a Muslim. Habibi, and a Muslim. Habibi, there you go. When you say that's the problem. And there are clause though. No, Habibi, when you go to war with a township. Sorry, I'll let you go. No, but you said something that needs correcting. You said you can own a Muslim as a slave. You can't, Akhi. You can't. You can't. How many? No, are, um, no. hold on. Wait, go Habib. On. Wait. Go the on. reason why you can't do that is because I can't go and own a free Muslim. If I own someone and he becomes Muslim, of course he's going to be. That's what that would, I'm saying. If your Muslim tribe. I'm yeah? free. I'm free. For example, yeah. a Shanti Muslim yeah. has a fight with a Fanti Muslim. Warfare. Yeah. 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 If one trumps over the other yeah. are you telling me that one cannot take the others as, as you Jaria? Can do, but it's, no, but it's not I'm not saying. Bro. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to own a, a, a free Muslim. Can you own a free Christian after warfare? Possibly, yeah. I don't can know, you own I, a free Christian know. after I warfare? I you can own a free Christian, a free Muslim. The clause is I, warfare. I, I agree with him. Saying, because in a war, if somebody beats own. somebody else, bro, I'm they saying, can so history, take history them Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, what you have just seen on camera, what you have just seen on camera are three Muslims saying that it is okay to have slaves after warfare. That is the problem with Islam. Because that is why we can do Muslim better than against, Islam. If Muslim you can't own another Muslim as a slave. The Christian will do the same. Christianity doesn't allow the that. Christian, Personally, in my understanding Christian, of Islamic law, I think you're right and he's wrong. Okay. Yeah. But on that point. On that point. The Christian, the Christian will do the same. So Dawood's position, Dawood's position yeah. is that you can't, uh, in war, you can't take a free Muslim as a slave, but you can take a free Christian as a slave. Oh, this know, brother's know, position, this brother's position it. is that you're in you war, can, right? you can take Muslims and Christians and anyone else as slaves. Does anyone see the problem that none of them have a problem with slavery? Perfect. <laughs> That's the problem. No, but you can't. It's like I would say. It's about nuance. We're not saying you can go to your neighbor's house who lives down the street from you and take him. We're saying in times of dispute, right, where the solution, well, the other solution is either you kill them or you leave the women folk to 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 uh, fend for themselves. It's a means of integration. I'm not talking about the chattel slavery where you do a thought experiment with him. Right. Let's say there's a civil war in Britain. Right. Yeah. The nationalists come to power. Yeah. Ethno nationalists come to power. They decide to kick all the Muslims out, yeah. and we all know that that'll end in a war. And the, there's a war. In that situation, yeah. could you Muslims take people as slaves if in this country today? Yes. And that's what I said earlier on. Yes, no. If the that's Christians are earlier. able to do the same, <laughs> that's what I said it's the on. same. Because okay. It's, it's so what you've got, a, what you've got today, is two Islamic Muslims rule. in the 21st century in Hyde Park in London saying that there is a circumstance in which they would legitimize the use and capturing of slaves and they are doing it because of the example of Muhammad. No, Case closed, Muhammad. my point is no, proven, it's not, it's we can do better than Islam yeah. and that better is Jesus Christ. Christianity does not allow section slavery. So let me, let me answer that point. Let me answer that point. Can you read Luke 12, 47? Forty-eight. It's not just like going to Tesco. Can you can you read? Uh, can you read your Bible? Look. I want I want I want I want I want to try I want I want to address this point because this brother said this brother said this brother asked the question. Does Christianity permit the same? Let us be clear. Christians definitely have done the same. Right. Definitely have done the same. However. You cannot show me, 
in the New Testament, right. the oh. New Covenant, yeah. where it is prescribed yeah. that in the conditions of war you should do that. Okay. Christians yeah, have done it. that, yeah. Christians have done that, yeah. however it is not justified to take slaves in war. Go on. Read it. Yeah. Uh, what's this, that servant uh, knows his master yep. will or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with yep. many blows. But yep. the one who does not know and does think deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. Yep. Now shall we talk about that verse? Yeah, yeah, fine. Let's talk about that passage. By the way, I'm only asking for your view. I'm not taking one second. to put on trial. One second. Right. Because they quoted a verse out of context. You didn't. It was by Yaya's direction yes, because he told him. Yeah. Because none of them actually bother as always, to pick up a Bible and read it for themselves. They just read the script. Let's read it in context. Read it in context. Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 35. He started reading at verse 47. So let's just come quick to the quick. Peter asked a question. Lord, are you telling a parable to us or to everyone so what is being mentioned what is a parable what's a parable but, a metaphorical, a metaphorical story what's a parable a story. so this is not an instruction can we, can we actually read one that? second this is a parable jesus taught in parables now let me explain why the bible teaches us in parables because the Bible uses stories because it is trying to read it, read it from 30, read it further back, not the bit that Yahweh highlights, the whole thing. And you should do the same. Yeah, 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 or Mr. Bean. Now, now, the fact of the matter is, right, brothers, this is what Jesus, Jesus teaches in parables. And the reason why he teaches in parables is this, is because the new covenant is be about becoming a particular kind of human being. It's about being a certain human, a certain way of being human. And our Lord taught in stories so that you could capture the ontology of that humanity. And in this parable, what he's being taught is watchfulness, alertness, the idea that we should always be watchful to our Lord, that we should always be expectant of him, that we should always be alert to the fact that he is returning. That is what is happening in that parable. What Jesus is not doing, he's using a parable, using a picture that everyone is familiar with. So he's teaching in his socio-cultural context. So in his context, yes. slavery would have been, would have been normal. Right. But Jesus didn't have slaves, okay. even though he could have had slaves and no one would have criticized him. W was, that from a, was that from a Roman perspective or a, a Judaic perspective? Uh, oh, oh, the, Roman, the Romans had slaves. Right. The Roman law permitted slaves and that corresponded to the Torah law. Right. Okay. Not denying that slavery is in the Old Covenant, not denying that it is in the Torah. But what I'm saying to you, bro, is that in the New Covenant, it does away. There's no sanctioning, no saying take slaves. Now let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. To your heart, which is better? The idea that says you and I are equal in dignity and I can't own you as a possession and you can't own me as a possession or the idea that says that we're not equal in dignity and you can own me in possession or I can own you in possession. Okay, so Which of those two is better? Um, in, a, in, a, in a utopic um, situation, I would say the one where neither of us own each other is better. But I agree. You mentioned the part about us um, being different in, in rights or a, a class sort of system where you can own me. I'm going. For me, I believe... Take care. <laughs> I, be, I believe that in warfare, it is only an option. I don't think it's mandatory or a must. And I believe that it's a way to integrate a foreign hostile um, entity into your own. Thank you. I, I, I don't believe in this, this the, the, like I say, this chattel style slavery where you oppress people yeah, and beat their backs and what have you. That's not, the, that's not the picture that I want, although you can't, it's often hard to separate slavery from that because of past, um, past cases of where it's happened. Now I'm saying in a utopia, yeah, that'd be fine, but we don't live in a world where everyone is equal or everybody's treated equal. So although it might sound nice in a utopic thing i'm saying as a very practical element of, of of living in this day where warfare can can happen any minute i, I don't believe it is the better choice to not so, be able so, to so let me ask you let me ask you this question you said that it is optional yes right 
So if Muhammad is the best example, in a time when he could have been free of slaves, yeah. I mean, we agree that Muhammad was in a position where if he had wanted to, he could have been free of all slaves. He could have been free of all slaves. But Correct. He, he, he did, did have slaves. He did have slaves. Did he sell slaves? He did, oh, I don't know about selling slaves, but like, as in, are you talking about, has, did he have an occasion where he did, or was that an occupation of his? Did, n n th th there were occasions when he did. There was an occasion where he did, yes. Right, so right. Muhammad had slaves, he sold slaves, did, he, he, allow his, well. did he allow his followers to have slaves? The Quran doesn't forbid it. So, the, so, so, so that's a yes. So, so, no, no. The, the Quran not forbidding it doesn't mean it employs you to do so. Right. So it's a social so, context was that slavery was a yes, norm and the Quran You're didn't. saying it's an option. Right. But the point is your best example, mm. even though he could have chosen not to have slaves, decided to have slaves. And don't say he was bound by economy. No, no. One second. Wait, wait. One second. Yeah, go on. Because Jesus Christ lived 2,000 years ago when slavery was normal. He could have had a slave and he never did. Yeah, that's fine. But did And he... so could have the apostles but, but, and they never did. did. But did Jesus Christ ever rebuke those people who owned slaves not to? I don't know of any recollection in the Bible where I can find that. But that's besides that's the point. That's a fair yes. point. Allow me to address that. Remember how the Bible works? The Bible works in stories. We had that parable about being watchfulness. Yeah. So I want to try and I want to try and give you a way to read the Bible and, and, and everyone else by extension. Yeah. The way to read the Bible is you look at the stories of the Bible yeah. and you try to see what kind of humanity is being presented to you. Fine. Right? You meditate on what are those that, that what is that kind of humanity. Right. The scriptures describe for us a kind of human. And that human is meant to be generous in heart, is meant to be selfless in conduct humble in expectation and attitude. He's meant to be someone who seeks to serve, seeks to love, bases his life on hope, bases his life on faith, is watchful towards his Lord, is obedient towards his Lord, seeks to serve his Lord. He bases his life and conduct on love. This is the kind of humanity that you see in those Gospels. Now, if you are that kind of person who's generous in heart, loving, hopeful, is someone who seeks justice, is that kind of situation, bearing in mind that you've got this context of people being made in the image of God, this biblical understanding, in that kind of context, does it facilitate slavery or does it go against the culture of slavery? Um, I, I wouldn't say it facilitates it, but I, would also, I wouldn't also go as far as to say that it fully negates it. Um, one of the things I was thinking of when you were talking is the manu let's say there was a mass manumission of slaves. You mean like when William Wilberforce and the British Empire released <laughs> yeah, slaves? Yeah, because it, because it was getting on top of them and it was going to turn into a situation which they wouldn't have been able to handle. They didn't do it out of the kindness of their hearts. But William Wilberforce... <sighs> Or, or, or when William the Conqueror abolished slavery in the 11th century England. I, I didn't know that happened, but... But there you go. Why did, why did William Wilberforce abolish slavery in the 11th century? You told me. I don't know why he did that. It was because it couldn't be the case that a Christian could own another Christian as a slave. What, but they had done it for however many centuries. Exactly. The Anglo-Saxons were weaker in their discipleship than the Normans. So when the Normans came over, they abolished slavery. Fair enough. If that's, if that's and that was in the 11th yeah. century. But when you say that, can you define that? Because I asked it earlier as well. You said define what, sorry? Freeing slaves? No, I want you to define that movement that you're talking about. Are you talking here about state sanctioned manumission of slavery, abolishment of slavery, or are you talking about. In the 11th century in England. individuals who were in, involved in slavery. That's in, in, no, so I'm going to address. In the course of church history, it was both. William the Conqueror and the Normans did it from a state level. Yeah. Saint Ovidius did it from an individual level. Okay. Saint Ovidius was doing it in the 4th century. Yeah. William the Conqueror was doing it in the 11th century. Okay. The 4th century example of Saint Ovidius predates Islam. And the 11th century example of William the Conqueror is contextual, uh, contemporary to Islam. So post in both before and after Islam, or be both before and during the time of Islam, yeah. Christians provided a better example. So post 11th century, we can't find any, you can't find any slaves in, in Europe, or of the, course you can. The, the, right, so. Of course you can. But but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, there was, there was never an emancipation movement in the Islamic world that came from the state. I don't actually okay. know. Okay. Fair, fair, that, fair, fair enough. That. I, not that I know of one, yeah. but I'm saying I can't think of a time where every Muslim came to, or the Muslim yeah. state came together and said, we're going to free yeah. all the slaves. Yeah. But I wonder 
what is the actual because I don't know about Europe but I'm saying what would be the actual result yeah of freeing slaves in Arabia where slavery was heavily practiced what would have been the fate of the slaves in the desert after being freed and having no refuge no homes no 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 um no work what what, what What's the, what is the practical... I get your point. Give me a practical you're, you're, saying, you're saying socio and economically it would have been impractical. I'm saying, yeah, I, I, can, I can imagine... A, a but but what I'm saying to you, bro, is that over 1,400 years, yeah, yeah, yeah those socio-economic... So, like, let's lo you, use America. Abraham Lincoln was inspired by Christianity okay. to oppose the slave trade. Yeah, they released slaves. Do you believe he was... He was I he, believe he, he was inspired by right, Christianity, even yes. Though he clearly has quotations sh that show that he is it was as racist as every other uh, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, yes. by, by our yeah, modern by our by our, by our modern context, he was he was he was co could be considered racist. But no offense, Muhammad would also be considered racist. To, yeah, if you want to say that, but when he calls when he says. When he calls Ethiopians yeah. raisin heads, okay. if I call, I often hear that. Bruv, yeah. if I called you a raisin head, mm. like. Did right, I'm referencing both your shape and your colour. Okay. That would be racist, right? But, see, this is the thing I Would that be racist? Of, yeah, if I said Ethiopians are raisin heads, that would be racist. That's not what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. Right. Is it, are you sure? Yes. Yeah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Sam'an wa ta'an, hear and obey. Yeah, even, even if. if. There you go. So if you say even if, that's not a statement to say Ethiopians are oh, raisin heads. Yeah, yeah, that's just, yeah. that's just to say, that's look, one, one, no, it's not racist. Okay, one, of, me, one of the two, okay. one, let me let me answer. One of the two factors you have to, under, you have to understand is Ethiopians within that Hijazi region. I gotta go in 10 minutes, by the way. Sure, sure. Ethiopians in that Hijazi region, uh, that Hijazi region are generally you know, known for being the slave class, right? Yeah. And then, they also, generally speaking, the Arabs had racism in them. So they did, after at a certain point in their time, they did look down upon being black. Yeah. So the prophet here is not uh, is not urging slavery. What he's urging is hear and obey the leader. No matter if he's repugnant to you, yeah. no matter if he comes from a slave class which you don't like, yeah, no matter yeah. no matter what it is about him, yeah. I get as that. long as he rules Bro, you by the book of you Allah. You just said what, well, but but you've yeah. just made the same problem that he made. To defend Muhammad, he quoted he quoted a pope who permitted slavery. If you simply say, if did you I do simply that? yes, you did. If you there simply was a say, correction, remember. if you simply say, you if you simply that. say, if you simply say that because you're a liar, it's okay for me to be a liar. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Right. Because I don't hold on one second. Yeah, go on. You just said, well, Abraham. I said Abraham Lincoln was inspired by Christianity and he freed slaves. And yeah. then you said, but we have many quotes that he was a racist. So, well, I have one second. Yeah. Can I, I have why I made one that second. Yeah. I have quotes that Muhammad was a racist. Fine, so them. be consistent. Them. Be consistent. Okay. So, yeah. If Tommy Robinson, right, said obey your prime minister, even if he was a nigger, would you say that was a good comment or a bad comment? It's not the same. Why? Because nigger, in its in its essence, is a slur. You're avoiding the point color. he's making. No, if, if, if Tommy Robinson said, yeah, obey the leader, yeah. even if he's a black man with a head like a raisin, I wouldn't say that's racist. So what is head like a raisin then? What, what does yeah, that bro, signify? You know what you do right now. I just right said now. that. You know I, what, I just you, said you know that. You know what you're doing right it's now. It's just the signal. He yes. does that all the Sorry, time, but he knows you know, what he does. Habib, you know what you're doing right now? This is what you're doing. You're commenting mm. on the language of 7th seven, century Arabia, and you're telling us in 7th century Arabia, yeah. racism. The reason why I mentioned the Abraham Lincoln thing was wasn't to say. Term. Was it? We've yeah, got bad, you you've know, got bad. You can tell by the, the, context the point was you were saying he was inspired no, by Christianity. No context, and for me, honest. growing up in a Catholic I mean, background, I, I, would say I know my, that my racism is not something which is inherently even Christian. Even if he is, that means that right. when he just uses description, I'm gonna, it's a negative term. Because he's saying when, even if he's this when, person, when Muhammad described the devil, because and he used a black man as an example of the devil. Would you say that was racist? No, I wouldn't say it's racist. So you believe the black man is like the, the, the devil no. is like a black so man? The hadith you're going to mention is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Whoever wants to know the likeness of a devil, let him look to such and such a man." Then the commentator of the hadith goes on to say, "And he was a sturdy black man with ruddy hair or whatever." Yeah, that's not the statement of the messenger. The statement of the messenger is this man. Man looks like the devil, not because of his black skin. That is the comment of the commentator after. That is the comment to a black man and saying, 
the devil looks like this so man. So I'm saying to you, you cannot attribute that to the prophet. You can only attribute that to the person reporting. The was the person that he pointed to black or not? He was black. So he was pointing to a black man and saying the devil looks like this He's man. He's saying it looks like the devil, yeah. Would you say one of the immutable so characteristics of that man was that he was black? The immutable characteristic of you is whiteness. If I turned to you and said, you look like the devil, yeah? Well, I, I had that earlier by the Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> the Hebrew Israelites did exactly, <laughs> the Hebrew Israelites did exactly that thing. I, I, can, I, I can guarantee you, if I was saying, if I did make that statement, it wouldn't be because, because, because of the color of your skin. It might be because of some look that you projected or some sort of evil aura that I get from you. I'm not even, I'm not even beginning to, to, to um, insinuate what the prophet meant. Yeah. It just said, whoever would like to see the, the, the light of Satan, he looks like this. He also similarly said, the Prophet also said, I saw Esau. But he could have pointed to an Arab. He, he could have wasn't pointed to an Arab. He was, he a, was black, a black Arab. Right, right. So fair enough, he pointed yeah. to an Arab. He could have pointed to a, multiple different shades of people. But okay. But, but he picked a black man. If we're arguing from an angle of revelation, yeah, I know you don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad, but. From, a, from the perspective of the Muslim, he couldn't have pointed at any other man if his, if his description is accurate. If he's saying this man yeah. or the likeness of this man actually looks like Satan, yeah, it's not because of his but black skin. It's that black like man would destroy the Kaaba as well. Yeah. No, it says that Ethiopia, not a black man. Ethiopian was a term for black people. Would do no, it. Yes. come on, yes, bro. It was. No, it wasn't. If you're, would... if, if, so are you saying he's Ethiopian, Ethiopian, but he's going to come from somewhere else? Well, no, there aren't many white Ethiopians. Ethiopian Let's be honest. I'm saying historically Ethiopian has been used for black. It's not been yeah. used for black man. Ethiopian has been yeah, used for Ethiopians, bro. No, show us, show us, show us a reference in Arab history where it it's points to someone that's a non-Ethiopian person speaking about uh, uh, blacks as Ethiopians. I have to find it, but well, then, then don't claim, but, don't make a claim if you yeah, can't substantiate it, bro. Right. Well, trust me, paperboy your, your can bring out the water. evidence. Yeah, no, but let him. I don't like people to bring up yeah. stuff and then say we're going to go back later. Bro, I, I, I've really got to go. Sorry, yeah, oh, I've really got to go. Okay. You than than the Adnan Rashids and the Shamsis and and maybe next week we can talk about another topic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a Bible, brother? I. Encourage you both to read it, and yeah. what I would suggest to you, you have a read of it, mm. not for the sake of finding fault. I wouldn't. Pick a passage that you want to read and you want to discuss, and the next time I'm here, come and grab me, right, and we will sit down and we'll go through that passage and discuss it like intelligent people. But you see, but, me and Issa, we're a bit different. You see, me and Issa, we sometimes we talk about verses in the Bible that amazes us. The thing us. is, even when you talked yeah. about um, watchfulness, yeah. there's nothing I disagreed with. Yeah. Right, the thing is, the yeah thing all of it well. is, all of it resonates. Yeah. So it's the, the issue is not the teachings of Christ. Yeah. The, the, well, it's not, it's not fully the teachings of Christ. The issue we have here yeah, is based is based on creed. Yeah. That's the issue we have. Oh, that's the issue I have at least coming from. And I say it not to not to make it a validation, but I'm saying yeah. my background was someone who grew up in the Roman Catholic Church. Yep. So my issues are creedal. Um, and and I and I would say to you that that that. Uh, because I, uh, the reason why I became a Christian was because a Muslim tried to convert me to Islam. Okay. And, and I, I listed nine of the reasons today as to why I rejected Islam. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can watch the video because it's oh, like, yeah. I'm not going to go back through oh, all I'm, nine. Yeah. yeah. But, but, and then the brother jumped in on, on one of those reasons and, mm. and we've discussed it and we've touched on the various other ones. Mm. But what, what, I, what I find is that many of the reasons given by Muslims to reject Christianity all apply to Islam. Christians disagree about which books are in the Bible. Muslims disagree about which hadiths to trust. Christians have textual variants in their manuscripts in the Bible. Muslims have textual variants in the Quran. Christians, um, Christians have historical development within their terminology and their understanding of their own theology right. that we see like uh, things like the Council of Nicaea right. Muslims have we exactly have the that. same yeah, in yeah. Islam so every single reason given by Muslims to reject Christianity is also a reason to reject Islam okay so let me ask you a question regarding scriptural stuff do you believe that having um, Hafs and Asim next to um, Walsh and Nafi. These yeah. are by for those that are uninitiated. Those are different recitations of the Quran, as documented in different books, codices. Right. Do you believe that having these two together as textual differences, which I agree they are textual differences. Um, do you believe it's the same as, for example, the Codex Sinaiticus? Um, having or not having certain parts that um, later Bibles have or you know revised standard Bible and that matter of things do yeah you, do, do you believe that the two are, are like to like for you to so, 
question directly and clearly. In terms of the definition of a textual variant, they're identically the same. 100%, I agree. In terms, in terms of their scope, in terms of their scope, yeah. I would say that there is argument that the Quran has been maintained as a text in a, in a purer form, right. but not pure. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, Islam doesn't depend on it being better than something else, it depends on it being perfect. 100%. And the evidence demonstrates that it's not, okay. which means that a central claim about the Quran is false. Right. By contrast... Which is? What's the claim by, about by, the Quran? That, that it is perfectly preserved. Yeah. These are the claims made by Ahmed Idat, that it is an unchanged text that has been preserved for 1400 yeah. years. That is a totally now fallacious argument. Even the Dawah team have abandoned it. Yeah. And now I, don't believe, I don't believe it's fallacious. And yeah. Let me tell you why. Wait, wait one second. Oh, yeah, sorry. By contrast, Christianity doesn't make the same claim about the Bible. We do, our religion doesn't depend upon the Bible. That's the thing that Muslims don't okay. get. Are, are all Christians in agreement with that? Right? All Christians that have ever read a book and picked up the Bible would right. agree with that. Okay. Because the Bible was written by people that already believed what was in the Bible. I get you. So you're saying you depend more on the church rather than the Bible itself? I am then. saying those two things live in a symbiotic relationship that right. is like this. And so any problem with one is corrected by the other. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So the reason why I don't believe this, the preservation argument is um, fallacious is because all the, 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 the narrations that I can that I can name to you have all been perfectly preserved yeah, by the change of narration going back to the Prophet Muhammad. The only thing I would agree with you is that it's fallacious that when they when the Muslims say no, there's there's only one Quran. Where there are different narrations. How many Qurans are there then? So it, there's 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 ten. Each has each of them has two imams, so you have hafs, you have short bell, whatever. Yep. But what's important about these things, and one of the things, this is one of the things that increases my faith in Islam, is that none of the narrations contradict each other. One That's second. my point. One right. second. I, I would agree with you. I would agree with you. I would agree with you that the textual variants inside the Quran yeah. do not create the, a kind of contradiction that is that is jeopardizing any Islamic doctrine. Yeah. Totally agree with you. You know. King and owner, they are different words. Not every king is an owner and not every owner is a king. Yeah. But kings can be owners, so they're not a contradiction. Likewise, the textual variants in the Bible do not compromise the essential narrative of the Christian faith. I know all the textual, well, not all, I know many of the textual variants. I certainly know the biggest ones. Yeah. Right? And they, they, I'm not challenged by any of them. But Muslims yeah. try to tell me that I should be. And I'm not. Sorry. Yeah, and okay. I'm not. So, see, for me, as a as a as a young boy growing up in the church, I didn't have. I wasn't being taught by the Catholic I Church. I believe you. I believe. I wasn't you. being taught that there was a symbiotic relationship. I believe. I was you. being taught that this is the vi verbatim word, God, word of God, right? And you have to believe anything in it. Now, I can understand from your perspective why it's not really an issue because you're because you're talking about this symbiotic relation. So, where there's a difference, you go back to the church or whatever, and you reconcile it. Similarly. Islam has a thing where we go back to the cellar sometimes and, and they explain certain things and they reconcile it. I get it. But the, what we're trying to tackle, what I, at least I try to tackle, is this view of many Christians, and I'm saying because they're in my family, these people actually believe in the Bible as being 100% accurate. And if you are able to show them that there are um, contradictions, then their faith becomes weakened. They no longer, they, they start to question, hold on, if it's not as accurate as I thought it was, can it really be and, 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 and let me let me address that point because that the many Christians are ignorant of their religion they believe in the straw I've seen it here in the corner Christians arguing to defend the straw man created by Hashim Hashim creates a straw man he attacks the straw man and the Christian is so ignorant of his own religion he actually defends the straw man as if the straw man really is Christianity so what would that but, but, man? but 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 the yeah. rea but the reality is the reality is contradictions in the Bible apparent contradictions in the Bible yeah. yeah I I let us just assume that they're there it doesn't compromise the essential narratives of the Christian faith okay. now I, I am not convinced that there are any legitimate contradictions in the Bible 
But what I'm saying is, my faith doesn't depend on whether they're there well, or they're not. not. Right, okay. By so contrast, you inconsequential. To you then. By contrast, if I showed you contradictions in the Quran, then I'd which. Have, then then I'd, I'd be, I'd be stuck. And then, I, then what I suggest is the next time I'm here, I'll bring my Quran, because I've looked for it and I haven't got it. And let's go through what I think are contradictions in the Quran. And if I can show you real contradictions in the Quran, I'll have to revise my faith. will you have the courage to revise your faith? I definitely have to. I'd, I'd be. I'd be I have no other option but to do so. All right, then let's do that. Oh, have mate, to go. That's good. It's really nice to speak to you. Nice. No, yeah, you look I, after I, yourself. Oh, I've like, avoided you too now because of what I've seen with the conversations with the other people. And but I've, like, I've, I've, as far as I can have a conversation with you like this, we're all good. Man. Yeah. So let's do that. Yeah. Yeah, because because I think that that you are you are sincere in comparison to the Dawah team. Yeah, the Dawah team are insincere people. I think you're sincere, and I think that when you when you see the evidence, you you will probably have the courage to follow the evidence where it leads you. I have to, man. There's no point in being wrong and strong. So. Amen. Anyway, good night. God bless. Uh, very briefly, yes. So I'm just going to do a quick wrap up and then I'm going to go. At the beginning of this very long episode, I gave nine reasons why I rejected Islam and stood by Christianity. Nine reasons, of which one of those reasons was the example of Muhammad, the failure of the Caliphate, the failure of Islam, and the the inconsistency of the hadith literature and the ideas surrounding it and then a muslim came and spoke to me and we've had this big long debate and you have seen on camera today in the 21st century muslims arguing for slavery muslims defending the right to have slaves and saying that there are contexts in which they could take slaves you have seen on camera those same Muslims trying to distance themselves from the worst episodes recounted in the hadiths about Muhammad. By contrast, I have not been ashamed of anything that Jesus said or did, even when they misquoted my Lord. It was very obvious that they were taking his words out of context and that they don't understand the Christian because Christ taught in parables. And he taught in parables to talk about the kind of human being that we should be, to give us a picture of another kind of humanity. One that is not selfish, one that is not wrapped up in himself, one that is not given over to his lusts and his own selfish desires, but one who has self-control, builds his life on love, seeks to be a service to his brothers and sisters and to his neighbour in need. The choice is very simple. Try to follow a failed experiment called the Caliphate that we've already seen has failed in history or be part of a community that has stood the test of time and still stands 2,000 years despite the fact that there has been countless ideologies trying to destroy it. We Europeans destroyed the Caliphate. Tick to us, we win, they lost. That's a fact of history. We carved up the caliphate like a Christmas cake and then we ate it up and turned it into our colonies. That's how great Islam is. It couldn't even defend itself from us. But the church, the Europeans, the same Europeans who destroyed the caliphate also tried to destroy the church and they failed. The church is still here despite the attempts of the Nazis, despite the attempts of fascists, despite the attempts of liberals, despite the French revolutionaries, despite the Vikings. They all failed. The church is still here. Perfect. The scripture says that wisdom is known by its children. Look at the fruit of Islam. 1400 years and it still never managed to abolish slavery even though it had the chance on multiple occasions in multiple places and not once did it manage to do so it couldn't even transform the heart of the arabian man in the arabian peninsula to simply not participate in something that was illegal that in something that was legal and let's not pretend that Muslims can't do that because they do it with bacon and alcohol all of the time so if they can do it with bacon and alcohol why can't they do it with slaves and human beings why because in Islam one of those things is forbidden and the other is permissible Excellent.
by contrast the Christian ontology is one that says that human beings I should serve I should honor I should uplift I should have a generous heart and a generous spirit that is counter cultural to a culture of slavery which is why for 2,000 years Christians with variable different degrees of success have fought against the slave trade Sometimes they have succeeded and sometimes they have failed. But there is a witness all the way through history. In conclusion, the choice that you have to face is this. Do you want to follow Jesus Christ or do you want to follow Muhammad? And I offer, I offer to you our Lord Jesus Christ as better than Sharia law. Good night and God bless.